what's going on it's your boy h money mr the zone we in the building pfl rory mcdonald you know what i mean former contender you know former champion in bellator former ufc fighter rory mcdonald making his debut in the pfl and we gonna get tap out king in here you know what i mean let me drop the link for everybody that want to join great night of fights we got the nfl draft on as well today pfl to take over man so let's get tap out king in here if you know what i mean jelly bean if you know what i mean jelly bean get my boy tap out in here hit the like button though pfl you heard me PFL action hey. with the one and only tap out king, if you know what I mean, Jelly Bean. You know what I mean? With the one and only tap out king, ladies and gentlemen. PFL, yours truly, tap out king, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, no. PFL, Roy McDonald, finally making his way back. Making his debut in the PFL. You know, a lot of fans have been waiting for this moment, the return of Rory McDonald. And we're finally getting a chance, you know, to look at one of the biggest names in the sport. Uh, you know, Rory McDonald, a fan favorite, one of the best that come out of the country of Canada, you know. One of the few men that beat Tyron Woodley. Um, yeah, no, Rory McDonald is a phenomenal fighter here. He's taking on a tough competitor. Yeah, no, um, Curtis Millinder is fought in Bellator. He's fought in the UFC. So, you know, it's no, you know, it's like Curtis Millinder has that chance to get the job done here. You know, you can't count him out. He's fought at the big stages. He fought, you know, in Bellator. He's fought in the UFC. He's been around the game a long time. And, uh, you know, Roy McDonald can be in trouble here. You know, you can't count out Curtis Millinder here. You know, he's experienced. He's fought in every organization you can really think of. Um shout outs to jc shout outs to harold you know shout outs to everyone in the chat big night of fights we have the pfl returning here pfl too and um what a stack card we have in the pfl Like I said, Rory McDonald, one of the biggest names in the game, a former Bellator champ, you know, a former welterweight contender at welterweight in the UFC as well. You know, Rory McDonald, one of the best mixed martial artists here tonight in the PFL, making his debut, the PFL too, you know. So you guys got to give it up for Curtis Millinder for taking such a dangerous fight in the PFL, getting prepared mentally and physically for such a dominant athlete in the PFL. So, you know, it's a stack card. The PFL has been doing a lot of great signings in the free agency, bringing Anthony Pettis, bringing Rory McDonald, bringing Fabricio we're doing you know, bringing former champions to the table here. Um, but this is going to be a big night. You know, um, it's a lot of high hopes for Roy McDonald. A lot of people saying that he will dominate this tournament, walk off with a big payday. 
But at the same time, you have a dangerous man standing in front of Roy McDonald, Curtis Millender, great striker. Um, you know, what a lot of experience he's fought in the UFC, he's fought in Bellator, similar to Roy McDonald, and now these men will face off. You know, they both fought in Bellator, they both fought at the UFC. And now they meet up in the PFL to put on a great main event. Um, and, you know, I just can't wait for this main event to start. It's a big night of fights. PFL delivers once again one of the fastest growing organization in mixed martial arts today. And um, we couldn't be more happier to get a chance to watch the cream of the crop, Roy McDonald finally coming back here and getting a chance, you know, to dominate once again. And I mean, Rory McDonald, one of the best welterweights of all time, you know, uh, he's never captured that goal in the UFC, but we know, you know, that he was close. He beat former champs like Tyron Woodley. So, you know, he's beat a lot of great fighters. And um, we got a big fight coming up. Sabaru C coming in, you know, on the second fight of the card here. Um, it's a big fight, you know. Sabadu C making his way down to the octagon here. Yeah, no, we, you yeah, know, no problem, no problem. And this is the fight that's coming up. You know, Sabadusi making his way down here, you know, to try to pick up a win here in PFL. Um, it's a big fight for him. You know, I got to lean towards the Russian here, picking up the win. Um, he's 26 and 5. He has that solid record. You know, um, he's been on a big win streak. He's a big favorite to win in this fight. And um and that's the reason why you have to go with this fighter out of Russia here. You know, he's been dominating the game for quite a while. You know, he's fought in the ACB league. Um, you know, 26 and 5. He's on a seven fight win streak. It's a no-brainer. That this is the man who will dominate here. Um, you know, Sabadu C, he does have that size, you know, being six foot three at this welterweight division, he's a pretty big guy. Um, you know, if he using uses his game plan and uh, you know, stick to the strategy, using his range and his distance, he could pick up the big win. Nicole, you know, I feel like he's going to be the man to pick up the winner. Um, you know, that's just my opinion. And that's who we're rolling with here. You know. So let's get this fight started. You know, um, I feel like Saba, you see, he will have the advantage on the feet. But once this fight hits the ground, you know, this is all Nikolai here all day. Um, and he's going to pick up, I feel like, a submission victory or a decision win here. Um, 
you know, this fighter out of Sweden, you know, I feel like his striking is all he got. You know, he's one dimensional. Um, he's not going to be able, you know, to stuff the takedowns. We know how great of a ground game these Russian fighters have, you know, in their arsenal. And I feel like the takedowns will be there at any given moment. Um, so this is a great fight at 170 here in the welterweight division. Round one kicks off. Great southpaw stance here from Sabarusi. Great leg kick from C here. Sabaru, he does a great job. You know, he has that great uh, background in kickboxing. And, um, you know, he has the time and range down pack. He just needs to fall through stuff to take downs, work on the things, you know, he needs to work on to take his skills to the next level here. Uh, you know, he needs to be more dedicated to working on his wrestling stuff in the big takedowns and uh, being able to sprawl these these shots that, you know, we know that Nicole is going to eventually shoot in for. Kick a little bit low there. Uh, he's going to have to bring those kicks up, you know, just a tad. Be. And, you know, these men are both exchanging a lot of kicks here. Um, and that's a great job, you know, C's doing so far, keeping this fight on the feet. Nice left hook from Nikolai. And he's doing a great job, Sabadusi, here. Using the jab. Using the leg kicks. Using that height advantage that he has. In the reach advantage, doing a good job of using his footwork. And this is a great battle so far in round number one. You know, they're just really trying to fill out each other here. Not a lot of action going on in round one. Um, you know, we'd like to see these guys pick it up in round two. Um, you know, uh, barn burner kind of fight. You know, these guys need to really step it up, um, be a little bit more active. And, um, you know, Sabadu C is doing a good job, you know. And we want to see this fight hit the ground. We're not sure. Nice spinning back kick to the body. I mean, just great technique from both men, but, you know, these guys need to turn it up. You know, um, you don't want fights going to the judges, you know. We already know how that could out, uh, the outcome of that could happen, you know. You get robbed from a decision. You got to turn it up. You got to take the judges out of these fights, you know. And we've seen how the judges are in the PFL. Um, you know, they score fights a little bit differently. Um, we've seen a lot of robbery uh, robberies here in the decision of the PFL. Um, yeah, you know. And a nice leg kick. Very close round. Um, Sabarusi, I feel like, you know, is out striking 
his opponent here. Um, he's the one a little bit more busier. And um, Sabu C is just doing what he needs to do to pick up the victory. I feel like it's a close round, but he's out striking. And uh, Sabu C, you know, could get the job done here. And he gets the takedown late, but not enough time to actually do any damage. We're be headed to round number two here. Yeah. And we're on off to a break. We'll be back here round number two very shortly in the PFL. Um, you know, very close round. But... Not enough activity, I feel like. You know, these men haven't done anything. They pick up the big, you know, obvious round, you know. Very close. But if I was a judge, I got to lean towards Sabadu C here, picking up the W in round number one, you know. He outstruck him. And that was a close round. But she got to score it for Sabadu C. So round number two here, um, yeah, no, um, very close round one. Let's hope for a little bit more, um, you know, more activity from both men. The, you know, that was one of those rounds that was lackluster. You know, um, let's see if round two these guys will pick up, hopefully, um, in the PFL. 170 pounds weight class. You got Sabadu C trying to pick up the win here in PFL two. Yves Edwards and Sabadu C's corner, a great lightweight fighter who's fought at the UFC. Um, yeah, no, Yves Edwards was a dominant lightweight back in his day, and now he's in the corner of Sabadu C. And leading this man into another victory here, it looks like. Yeah, you no, know, you would have thought Nikolai would be shooting in for more takedowns that than he's actually doing here. He's falling into the game plan of Sabrusi, standing in front of him, you know, not shooting in on the takedowns, uh, not getting the fight down to the mat. Where, you know, we've seen him have most of his success in MMA. You know, a good submission fighter, but he's not taking this fight down to the ground. And a great body kick by Sabadu C. And Sabadu C is just out striking Nikolai here. Um, nice eye poke. Wow. Referee has to step in. Give him time to recover here. That was a bad eye poke. Um, so we headed to the break here. Um, yeah, no. That's a bad eye poke. The fight can be called over just off of that one mistake here. We've seen it happen plenty of times. Wow, finger right into the eye. Let's bring the doctor in, give him a chance to take a look. Hello from Canada. Shout outs to Canada. Rory McDonald is fighting tonight. All the Canadian fans go support Rory McDonald. He needs it here tonight in the PFL. So shout outs to Canada. Let's get Rory McDonald to get the big win here tonight, fellas. Let's do it, right? He was a former Bellator champ. Let's make him a two time champ. Let's bring him here to the PFL. Let's get him the W here. So, um, as you see, it was a nasty eye poke, you know, from Sabu Lucy. And now Nikolai will have that chance to recover. 
if this fight can even continue. That's a, sometimes an eye poke. It's all it takes to end a fight. The doctor's taking a closer look. This could be ruled off, you know. That was a bad eye poke. And we've seen plenty of fights in the UFC where the eye f- pokes, you know, cause the man a victory. We got referee gonna come up with a you know a conclusion to this year. Let's see. Is he going to be able to continue? I think they might have to roll this fight off. And um, these are the things that happen in MMA. You know, they need to do a better job with these gloves. Fighters need to do a better job of keeping their hands, you know, closed. You know, these eye pokes has been a problem in MMA since the beginning of time. Um, I feel like this fight might be ruled off here. He can't see, you know, in his eye. And this is going to be a no contest here. That's just how it happens. Uh, Doc seen enough. He's ruling this one off um, due to an eye poke, you know. This is just how it happens sometimes, you know. Crazy turn of events, you know. Sabadu C looked like he was on his way, went into decision. That's why you can't make these mistakes, you know, close your hands, you know, or they're going to have to come up with a better job of designing a new glove for MMA. You know, uh, no one wants to have a fight in in a way like this, you know. And there, there it goes. You know, you hate a fight to end this way, but it's ruled off due to an eye poke. We got Rory McDonald. Everybody in the chat going for Rory. Um, Shalom, Ben Israel. Thank you for stopping by, showing the love, brother. Uh, everybody, you know, in for a good night of fights. Trying to get. Rory McDonald to pick up the W here. Um, We've seen Anthony Pettis come up short last week. You know, so the PFL is just showing that, you know, anybody, you know, could lose here. It don't matter if you come from the UFC or Bellator. PFL fighters are no joke. Clay Collard dominated Pettis. So you know that the PFL have some of the best guys right now in MMA, um, you know. Curtis Millinder could give Rory McDonald a tough fight. Um, it's not going to be an easy for win for him. You know, um, the PFL, you know, started off as the World Series of fighting for the people that didn't know, who produced great fighters as Marlon Moraes, uh, Justin Gagey, you know. So a lot of people don't know the history of the PFL, where they come from, or what they stand for. They were originally known as the World Series of Fighting. You know, they had Anthony Johnson. They had Andre Arlowski. The people don't know their history. They don't know the language of these great fighters who came before entering the UFC, like Justin Gagey, you know, a guy who just fought against Khabib for the title. Um, These guys started in the PFL, the World Series to fight in championship. So um, for those that didn't know, you know, the PFL has been around a long time. Some people just think, you know, the PFL is some new organization, but they've been around MMA years now. And, um, you know, you hate – You know, I hate, you know, to see a fight in due to an eye poke. Yo, Sheldon Moore, what up, my boy? Tap out, King. What's happening, baby? What's going on with you, man? You know, just chilling, calling this PFL, man. 
I'm looking for what time that shit come on. Uh, I mean, it's on right now. Um, I'm using a stream, but it might be it might be on ESPN Plus. Or yeah, I think. Let it's me on see. ESPN. Oh, it's coming on at six. It comes on at six out here in two hours. Yeah, it come, it's three. It's four. So it comes on at six out here. The main card. And you, because you know they got the NFL draft on right now. Yep. So I gotta see what my Raiders, who my Raiders gonna pick up. What pick they got, the Raiders? We should have like the tenth or twelfth, something like that, because we were eight and eight last year. Okay. So our pick is like like fourteen, fifteen, something like that. I think. So I'm gonna um, find out right now. So how you doing, man? What, what, what fights we got tonight? Uh, you know, Roy McDonald coming back. So we got Rory McDonald on a, a main event. He's taking on Curtis Millinder. So it's a pretty good fight. Rory McDonald. That's a great fight. I'm just surprised that Rory McDonald could ever fight again after what Robbie Lawler did to his nose, bro. Yeah. You know, he went off after that. He went to Bellator and he, he became a champ over there. Right. So he's been still a little busy since uh, the uh, Robbie fight. So, yeah, Robbie Lawler and him had a war, you know. Yeah, yeah. Bad. That was a nasty that, – that fight was vicious. I, I gave a lot of respect for Roy McDonald on that fight because most motherfuckers would quit. Definitely. He took a lot of damage in that fight, man. R Robbie hits hard, too. Yes, he does. Hit like a truck. What is up with Robbie? I haven't heard nothing from Robbie. Did he retire? Nah, he – he ain't really been – he's been losing a lot, man. He lost to uh, Neil Magny. He lost to Ben Askren. Yeah, he well, Askren, really that was bullshit. They should never stop that fight. That Askren fight was bullshit. Yeah. I and then say that to my dying day. And lost to Magny, so. Well, Neil Magny's a good fighter. He's a good he up-and-coming kid now. You got to get it to Neil. He ain't been winning no fight, so, you know, hopefully he can come back around, man. Well, he's 40, man. It's about time to give it up. Robbie Lawler's long in the tooth, bro. <laughs> he's been around forever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, hopefully, you know, he gets, he have a farewell fight, maybe one more. Yeah. Oh, we got the 17 pick tap out. So that ain't that bad. That's still pretty pretty early in the drive. Yeah, we'll get somebody. We need defense, though. That's what we need, bro. We're, our defense is shit. <laughs> Offense yeah. is set. We just need defense. Offensive yeah. line and defense. That's what we need. And the thing is, with the NFL draft, you got guys coming in the sixth round that, you know, go off and be great football players. So yep. you never know who they might pick up. Exactly. You get Hall of Famers in like rounds three through seven. Usually where the Hall of Famers come from. That's Unknown guy. Yeah. And it'd be the top picks. That's always, you know, not doing really anything in the game. Trash. Fucking yeah. trash. Spend all this money on this motherfucker and he ain't worth a shit. Because he ran around from cones pretty fast and he lifted some weights. <laughs> and come to the NFL and it ain't the same thing. No, this ain't no weightlifting contest, son. <laughs> yeah, I remember that dude. They had Tim Couch. That dude yeah. was a bum. He went high in the draft. Yeah, he was the man in college. Yep. In college. That Keely yeah. Smith. That was another In college. Dude. Yeah. Yep. In college. We not in college. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That shit that was open in college, those windows that was open in college, they're not open in the pros. Yep, and you see them change real, you know, they change up quick, man. Vince Young, he was a dude, yeah. another dude. He he was all right, though, Vince Young. He yeah, did, well, Vince, I really, I will say this to you, Tap Out. I will say this to you, bro. I think motherfucking Jeff Fisher sabotaged uh, Vince Young because he yeah. didn't pick Vince Young and he didn't want him. Yeah, Vince Young. He had some good seasons, though. Yeah, yeah, he did. His, uh, he did his thing, but he fucking uh, 
He fucking uh, I think uh, fucking Jeff Fisher sabotaged him because these coaches got egos too, quite as cat. And he didn't pick that motherfucker, and he didn't want him. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? And Reggie Bush, that was another dude go up high in the draft, have like two, three good seasons, and never see him again. Right, right, right. Because the pros is different. That shit, you you know, you can, that pounding man. That's the that's the one fucking position. That's I think is the hardest position to play is running back because you getting hit every Everybody. fucking play. <laughs> yeah, that's a hard that's a hard position to play, man. You take a lot of damage on you. Exactly, you get hit every goddamn play, and no, your body can't take that. Is like you see Emmett. People like Emmett and uh, Walter Payton, those got special athletes, man, that could take that pounder for 10, 12, 15 years. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? You don't see that no more. That's why nowadays you look at the league, it's always a two or a three back system because they finally figured out that one guy can't do it by himself. Yeah. <laughs> one guy two. can't do it. Everybody running with two running backs. Now. Yep, two and three running backs. You got to have it. You got to interchange them motherfuckers. If you want to be successful, unless you're Tennessee and you got that motherfucking hog Henry, but he gonna be done in a little while because the way he running the ball, you can't keep giving the motherfucker the ball three or four hundred times a season. You can't keep doing that. <laughs> yeah, I don't give a fuck how big and tough you are. You gonna fall? Yeah, I'm look, I was looking. I was looking for the stream, but it's not on, bro. Uh, mom went to crack streams. Uh, I, I gotta figure. I go with my daughter to get home. I can't. I, she knows how to fuck with this smart TV. I don't. <laughs> yeah, I just use uh, crackstreams.is. Hey, did you hear about that shit that just went down, bro? What? How uh, Jake Paul's numbers was bullshit, and now Triller is suing like twelve or fifteen streaming companies for stealing their fucking event. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. I don't think nobody would order. Uh, yeah, that wouldn't make sense for someone to order that many pay per views of Jake Paul. Like, I mean, who would really spend their money to watch that guy fight? I mean, like, maybe some little kids that's on YouTube and social media, but anybody who knows about real fighting would not order. Anything really do with Jake Paul? I don't know. H Money kind of likes him, bro. Yeah, you know they they did a good job. You know they it was entertaining. You know Thriller they did a good job. You know having those rappers and musicians come through and perform. They did a good job. But the fighting wasn't that high skilled. I feel like yeah, it was. Yeah, no. It was fucking terrible. Tell the truth. I wouldn't it was pay fucking terrible. If they told me, you know, you could order this for ten dollars, I wouldn't have. I'll still find the stream. You know, uh, it would exactly it, not worth the money at all. Exactly. Tell Ben Israel stop putting them bullshit comments in the comment section. <laughs> we all know that Spence is going to sleep inside of ten, bro. Just accept it, Ben. Accept it, Ben. Crawford is knocking Spence the fuck out. <laughs> man, I don't think nobody was really tuning in to that, man. All I think everybody's watching off of legal streams, man. Yeah, yeah. That's why they're mad. Because they said, you know, number one, they're mad at Jake Paul for putting that bullshit out there. <laughs> you know, saying about these millions. Of and now they're mad because they didn't get that much and they lost a bunch of money. Because everybody stole the shit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and good luck trying to find all the people that that was streaming, you know, the fight. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like thousands of, of streams where people are putting up those fights. There's no way in hell they're going to stop them all. Dana White tried, you know, to stop the people from streaming the UFC fights, and he still didn't couldn't. work. Yeah. Didn't work. Didn't work. <laughs> It won't ever work. It's always going to be a new way. People will always find a new way to get through and put in the fights up. They've been right. doing this for years. So let me ask you something, uh, Tap Out. Yep. 
are, are you and your bro gonna waste fifty bucks on that fight Saturday night? Um, the UFC is it UFC? No, it's fucking uh, Ariola and Andy Ruiz. No way. No way. <laughs> I mean, it'd be rare for me to want to buy in a, a real event. It'd have to be some crazy. Like, they have to have a, a stat card, and I probably still wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> but still, you know, it, it'd have to be some crazy for me to want to pay for it. Big money, you know, when I know. I could just go on the streams for free and watch it. Right. Now, I will say this. I am a boxing fan. So, if they have a big fight, I'll support it. You know what I'm saying? Because I love boxing. That's just yeah. like if John Jones is somebody's fighting. I'll support it because he's one of my guys. I like him. Anthony Rubble Johnson, I'll support him. It depends on the guy that's fighting yeah, I understand that, but yeah, that Ruiz, that's definitely not pay per view material. I don't think. No, so. no. Yeah, man, no. that's something that sh you could watch on ESPN. I feel like you know. That, yeah, that's, that's Fox. Like, that's Channel Eleven Fox Saturday night something. Yeah, it it ain't worth it. I mean, I feel like. Ruiz would get the job done just for the fact, you know, when's the last time we seen Ariola fight? And um I know he's up there in age as well now, man. I haven't seen him fight in a long time. Yeah, he's 40 now. He's 40 years old. Yeah. Yeah, that's not gonna be competitive at all, in my opinion. Wow, that was a big knockout in the PFL right now. Wow, first round finish. Wow. These are for Harry. So, um, Where's Carissa fighting, bro? Carissa Shields, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I heard she's supposed to debut soon, right? Um, I'm I'm not sure. Oh, in the, into MMA? Oh, yeah. In the PFL, I'm, yeah. She's going to be yeah. a fighting PFL. I'm not sure when she's coming. Probably, How do you feel about it? Honestly. Uh, How do you feel about it? Um, I feel like, you know, when it comes to the striking, she's gonna be, you know, one step ahead of everybody they put against her, but the ground game is uh, you know, yet to be seen. Um, you know, uh just the grappling and the whole wrestling aspect. We don't really know how good she is there. And um, you know. Do you think like do you think six is. months with John Jones is enough? Nah, no way. Six months, <laughs> you know, you gotta you gotta put in the years. I feel like before, you know, she could be really comfortable off her back and stuff like that. Um, like I said, with the proper, if they do the proper matchmaking for her, you know, put her up against other strikers and, um, you know just really take their time with her and uh, not rushing her so quickly, uh, you know, she could be, you know, a champ down the road. Well, you know, they go do that, but here's the thing. What if, what, what, what I fear is, uh, they're going to keep putting their in soft touch, soft touch, soft touch. Right. Yep. And they're going to give her one person who they think is a soft touch. And that person ain't gonna be down with the program. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? They're gonna be something uh, you know, different than they expected. You know, they might have thought, you know, shields will run through her, but you know, it didn't turn out that way. That's how it usually happens. Exactly. They and I really don't lightly. like I get the move, uh, tap out. I get the move for money reasons. Because she needs to get paid. But I don't like it because eventually she's going to run to somebody that she can't beat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's the love of the game. But, you know, I feel like they got that girl Kayla Harrison. I think she's been working with Kayla Harrison as well. So, uh, 
Yeah, stay far, stay fucking far away from her though. Yeah, that, those stay are the fucking kind of, far away from Kayla Harrison, bro. <laughs> those are the kind of girls that can give her trouble. Exactly. Yeah, but you know, I, I can't wait to see her actually fight. Though I think you know, with her striking, she's gonna be able to get girls out of there real quick, man. Yeah, I with mean, the four ounces, with the four ounces, yeah, I think that's gonna improve her knockout ratio immensely. Yeah. Those gloves are way smaller than boxing, so she she has power already with boxing gloves. So just imagine the power with those little gloves on. Somebody in the chat said she gonna get stopped. Who was that? Let me look and see who that was. Who's the hater in the chat? Twenty four Geezy. Geezy, you think she gonna get stopped, Geezy? Danny the Great, what's happening, brother? You don't want to miss it. If Lion Ryan, imagine the hate Haney and Tank would get for pulling this BS. He's the biggest ducker in boxing. Teofimo's behind. <laughs> Geezy, why are you so angry, bro? Geezy, you, got, you can't be so angry, Geezy. You can't be so angry, bro. Ryan needs our sympathy, brother. <laughs> man, that was a big knockout in the PFL, though. Dude got knocked out in the first, man. Uh, he just, dude got caught, got him out very quick in the first round. Damn, I got to get tech savvy, bro. I'm I'm behind the times, homie. Yes, I'm behind the times. I'm behind the times, big dog. Yes, sir. Daddy the great say Geezy spitting facts. No sympathy for Ryan. And Haney, Haney, Haney. You know, uh, Daddy, I was gonna try to go to that fight, man. And I called for tickets, and they said the, the tickets they had left was like thirteen fifty. That's a little bit above my pray grade, bro. <laughs> I watched that shit on TV. <laughs> ben Israel, won't you stop it, man, with that bullshit, homie? You know Spence is getting knocked out. He's ducking right now. He's ducking. He going to take the easy fight with motherfucking Ugas and avoid the other motherfucker that got a strap. What's, why does it matter what strap you get first? If you suppose it's supposed to be strap season, supposed to be man down, right? I think it's all cap, Ben. I think your boy is capping. Oh man! So who you got? Who we got coming up next? Um, Antonio Carlos Jr. taking on uh, Tom Lawler. It's a pretty good fight. Who the fuck is Tom Lawler? Is that Robbie's brother? Nah, he's fought in the UFC though before Tom Lawler. Um, but uh, you remember that time um, Chuck Liddell and Tito Ortiz had that third fight with Oscar? Roger. I remember that. I remember that. He fought on, on that card against uh, Jerron Wynn. I think Jerron Wynn's like. Um, uh, Daniel Cormier's like uh, some kind of training partner, so okay. he's, fought on the, he, he's fought in the UFC too. He fought Corey okay. Anderson before. Did he win? Uh, nah, Corey beat him in a decision. <laughs> he fought Chris Wyman before too. Did he win? Nah, he's not that. He ain't that good. <laughs> That's why I think they got him in the PFL. Okay, okay. Geezy, no. I just want to see Spence and Crawford so all these Spence uh, managers can shut up. That's why I want to see it, Geezy. You know, I understand. I want to see Crawford and Spence for Undisputed, but I want to see the fight. The way it's going, Geezy, don't look like we're even going to get the fucking fight. We're not even going to get the fight. And I'm tired of these Spence managers, you know, these, these managers who 
know his business dealings and been in the meetings with him and know exactly why he won't take the fight with Crawford and figuring out that he deserves this and he deserves that. <laughs> you know, why do you care? How much of it is he giving you? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I don't give a fuck what they get paid. As long as they fight, they ain't giving me none. It's going to cost me money to watch them fight. So, fuck them. <clears throat> Has that fight started yet? Tap out. Hey, tap out. Oh, he left. He must be getting something to eat or something. Here we go. It's the draft, baby. Who is that in chat? It can happen later this year if they get the third belt. First, you can't be the king of division or fighting three belts instead of taking them all and beating the best. That's facts. That's facts, Geezy. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking I'm on the same lines as you, Geezy. I think we're going to get that fight December or January next year. That's what I think. JC, what's happening, my man? Lisa, what's going on? Geezy, ask him why Bud trying to sell WL. <laughs> ben Israel will not give it up, bro. He just will not give it up. He's trying to sell it, huh, Ben? He broke. He need money, so he's going to sell the belt? What are you going to sell it for? Uh, a two-piece and a drink? Yo, what's good? What's good this hey. hey, hey, is that my man H Money? Yeah, what's good? What's up, man? Uh, ben Israel over here telling me Bud trying to sell the WBO belt for two pieces and a uh, drink. Nah, man, come on, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I to Bo Mac yesterday being Israel, by the way. So, you know, just keep that same energy when Bo Mac comes to the panel. When Bo, when we get that interview with Bo Mac, yeah. keep that same energy. I got Bo Mac number. I talked to him last night, and Bo right. Mac is a real one. I can tell him yeah. more. That he's real, bro. He a real yeah. deal, Bo Mac, man. He's a good well, brother, you man. Can tell that. You can tell that H, by the way. I mean, just being honest, no fan bullshit, none of that, bull, all that bullshit aside. You can tell the type of dude Bud is by the way he carries himself, man. He don't, he don't drink, he don't smoke, you don't see him all on the on the ground. He ain't doing all that bullshit. He's training, he's trying to stay ready. You know what I'm saying? You can tell what type of dude he is. He's serious. You know what I'm saying? So, we, you know, like we say, uh, being in being this road, you just keep that same energy. You talk, you, all this shit you talking to me, tell it to Bomac. You got exactly. to me because I'm not involved. <laughs> Derrick James ain't coming around here. Derrick James, he he not messing with the people. He ain't, yeah. you know, he's going to holler at you being Israel. So, man, why you over here capping for Earl Spence and he over here kissing men and stuff? Earl Spence. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sean Porter put hands on him like, I mean, God, you over here capping for this dude. He don't even fuck with the people. Come on, man. You got to stop that nonsense, bitch. You tapping for a dude that don't even fuck with you, bro. He don't even come through, fuck with you. Devin Haney, come through. Do an interview with us. Bill Haney, come through. Show us love. Tiafimo Lopez, his daddy came to the channel at least. You know what I mean? Bo Mac willing to come to the channel. What about what about uh Earl Spence? Where the fuck he at? Oh, my bad. He probably kissing Yellow Beezy right now. Holding his hand. <laughs> <laughs> ah, H, you cold with that, bro. You cold with that. <laughs> you know what he doing? He probably holding hands with Yellow BZ walking on the beach and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, like I tell him, man, these dudes are Spanishers. They know all the aerospace business dealers. They know exactly why he ain't taking the fight. They know what he's making. They, they can decide what he should be making because he's a big fish. He needs to get this. Why do you give a fuck? How much is he giving you? He's not going to give you mm -hmm. shit. He ain't that dude would piss on you if you was on fire. So, <laughs> fuck that dude. I don't give a fuck what he makes or how much he gets as long as they fight. Because it's going to cost me money to watch him fight. So, I don't care what they get. And that was Bud talking about making the fight happy. 
That was Earl Spence saying he need to go get a belt first. I got to clean up my side of the street. I'm going to take the easy route. That was all him, man. And for a fighter, you know, of that magnitude, somebody that I respect like Earl Spence, which I think is a great fighter, and for him to not behave like a true champion, you know, for him to choose the Adrian Broner route, the Tank Davis route, you know, um, you know, getting drunk, partying, you know, drinking and driving, you know, doing that's what that's the Adrian Broner route, you know, struggling to make weight, blowing up in between fights to two hundred pounds, you know, that's the that's what he chose. He chose not to be dedicated to the sport of boxing. He chose to kiss Yellow Beezy. He's the one, you know, that decided to hold his hand on camera. Are you talking all that shit, Ben Israel? Get on the panel and, and support your boy there. Get on up here. You don't want to support that dude. He don't even fuck with him like that, to be honest with you. <laughs> dude, how do you really mess with a dude like that after he kissed another man like that? You know no. what I mean? How do you? You know what I mean? He's not giving you the fights that you want. Ben, you talk about the Terrence Crawford fight more than Earl Spence does. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So what you say, H? H? He's never gonna be able to live that down, H. Uh, say, say it again. I said he'll never be able to live that down. The the the, the man kissing incident. Yeah, man. I don't know what's up with that, man. I, I still don't know what's up with that. I mean, I lost respect for Spence because I remember when Spence first started, he was a quiet guy. He was letting his fist do the talking. And then once that pressure came on him where they said, oh, this guy is so good. He's the, uh, he's the next great champion. And, you know, he, he didn't deliver. He never delivered the Keith Thurman fight. Earl Spence never gave us the biggest fights in the welterweight division. What fights he gave us? Mikey Garcia, who was a featherweight. You know what I mean? What fights did he give us? He gave us a Sean Porter fight. Porter, who already been beat by Keith Thurman and Kell Brook. You know what I mean? So it's not like you beat Sean Porter, who was undefeated. Sean Porter already got beat it already. And Sean Porter almost beat you. I had that fight. I had it as a draw. You know, I thought Sean Porter actually won that fight. Even Deontay Wilder said that. And Ben, I know you a Deontay Wilder fanboy. What about Wilder saying that Sean, he thought Sean Porter, you know, really won that fight. He thought it could have went either way. So now you keep that same energy. You know what I mean? I'm just fed up with uh, the lies. I'm fed up with Earl Spence hiding behind Al Heyman, hiding behind the, uh, his fanboys, hiding behind, hiding behind Yellow Beezy. Yeah, hiding behind Yellow Beezy. You know what I mean? <laughs> It looked like Yellow Beezy was like his type of, that was his hoe or something. That's what it seemed like to me, because Earl Spence is the fighter, you know what I mean? And he was treating <laughs> Yellow Beezy like a hoe, holding his hand, kissing him and shit. Yellow Beezy like, yo, what's wrong with this dude, bro? D-Nice, what's up, my man? Join the panel, D-Nice. What That's up, my dude? guy right there. What up, Nice? What's popping? Yeah, D-Nice was cooking last night, though. Shout out to D-Nice. That nigga kiss men. <laughs> D-Nice say that nigga kiss men. <laughs> true, though. That's the sad part. It's actually true. <laughs> holding hands. He was holding the motherfucking hand. Like, you know what I mean? Why you all hey, up? Let me, ask you this. let me ask you this, H. What you think about all the hate that Eddie Hearn is getting right now? I think he, some of the hate he do deserve. Like, you got to be honest now, Shelton Moore. Like, has uh, Eddie Hearn delivered the big fights for Demetrius Andre? No. No. Has, has Eddie Hearn delivered the big fights for Devin Haney? No. no. Has Eddie Hearn delivered the big fights even for AJ as far as Tyson Fury? No. Did he deliver the De Deontay Wilder fight? No. No. You know what I mean? So, he, do he does deserve to be criticized, to be honest. You know what I mean? Because He's not giving us the fights that we want as fight fans. He's right. not. Right, right. But see, here's the thing. I just had some new insight on this shit, right? They say the fight's going to happen, and the fight's going to happen in Saudi. Am I right? Is that what they're saying? I, I mean, now I don't even know when the fight is going to happen, to be honest. I heard well, Wilder's name is back involved in the situation. I'm hearing, you know, yesterday you actually apologized to uh, – you know, LDBC members because we I did. Was I did. 
Yeah, was, Google was cooking them. But here's the thing: I forgot. I didn't. See, I didn't realize this until today. Until Coach Malachi put me up on game. Look, you got to remember something, bro. The South. If the Saudis are putting up the money for this fight, right? It's Ramadan right now. Ain't nothing happening in Saudi Arabia until after the 12th. Ain't no contracts being signed. Ain't no money changing hands. Nothing. It's Ramadan. They don't do business during Ramadan. Am I right? I'm not sure uh, as far as them doing business during Ramadan. I'm not sure how that works. But I, I am Muslim and I'm fasting right now. But I, I, I'm not sure whether it's not business from going on. I don't know anything about that. Yeah, I don't, I don't think them dudes are. I think all business, I think everything shuts down during Ramadan, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure because I'm not Muslim, but I'm pretty sure uh, we're going to give you the money, but we're going to give it to you when we give it to you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I heard Tyson Fury, you know, he sent out a savage message to Anthony Joshua, calling him a hype job, saying he's a bodybuilder. Tyson Fury said, let's fight AJ. Like, he putting pressure. Tyson Fury Tyson Fury really wants that fight, saying he going to knock out AJ within three rounds. And I want to hear AJ respond to Fury. You got to clap back. You know what I mean? Don't let Fury do <laughs> like that. Fury sent a savage message to him, dog. And, I heard and, something about that. I haven't seen it yet, but I heard I something about that, bro. I posted it. Yo, Fury went in on him. Fury was like, yo, I'm going to knock you out in three rounds. Let's make this fight happen. Called him a dorser, all type of shit. You know what I mean? Fury was disrespecting him. It was like a real savage, spooky. It was like a spooky message he sent to AJ. And we still haven't heard a word from AJ. And then Tyson Fury went back on social media today and roasted Eddie Hearn some more. You know, called Eddie, Eddie, you know, disrespected Eddie Hearn, called them a Think he caught them a bitch or something like that, you know. You know how Fury, Fury ain't gonna hey, lie. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. You He's know what they say, that. and you know what they say, H. You can say what you want. That's fine. But when it goes down, we gonna see if you about that action. We gonna he see if you can back up the shit you talking about. We gonna he find out. Back up though, Felton. That's the thing. When he said he gonna knock out Wilder. He actually went in there and knocked him out. You know what I mean? So, he did that. He did that. But I, I, I mean, I'm just saying from AJ's side, he's probably saying, okay, you did that to Wilder. You did that to everybody else. But you ain't did that shit to me. I'm not there. So do it to me. Make me a believer, motherfucker. You can talk all you want to. Make me believe it. That's all you got to do. Show me. Yeah. Don't tell me. Show me. When you think about Tyson Fury, he talked, he talked that shit, but he, he, he backed it up. He, he has. It. He done so it in far, the he has. Yeah. So far, he, he has. has. You cannot take that away from that man. So far, everything he said, he done backed it up. But we're going to see. Because you, you can beat Wilder. You can beat uh, Klitschko. You can beat all these guys. You ain't beat me yet. <laughs> I'm not there. But AJ, hey, you remember, remember, AJ you remember back in the day? You remember back in the day, H? What, what did Joe Frazier say? You beat Sonny Liston. You beat Oscar Bonavina. You beat Jerry Quarry. You ain't beat Joe Frazier. <laughs> <laughs> I bet the thing is, Joe Frazier responded. I want to see what AJ got to say. Or is Fury yeah, just, yeah, true, Fury just, true. Fury just dogging his dude. He, he, he's destroying him mentally already. You, he won't even respond to him. He want Anthony, he want Eddie Hearn to do all the talking for him. I'm like, dang, AJ, you can't speak for yourself. <laughs> uh, see, H, you just want the smoke, H. I'm you sure. want all the smoke, dog. At least Wilder was responding to him, talking trash back. I'm like, damn, AJ quiet like a church mouse once Fury get on his line. You know what I mean? Fury, this is what Fury does. Mentally, that's called what you call mental warfare. AJ right. here to go back and forth with this dude. If Fury talking about hey, AJ, I want you, I'm gonna smash your face in. <laughs> <laughs> he called them a bodybuilder and a hype job. That shit was funny though, bro. Yeah. I ain't oh, I believe, I believe. oh, don't don't get it twisted. Tyson Fury is very entertaining. Tyson Fury is great for the sport. But it, it just comes a time, and you know this because you're a grown man. It comes a time in every man's life where you got to back up all that shit you talking. <laughs> You're going to have to back it up. That Fury been doing it. He, he, he backed yep. up. He tried talking against Wilder. He guaranteed a knockout. 
and he knocked Wilder out. He did it against Klitschko, guaranteed victory. You know, he backs it up. He, well, that, that would make him such a special fighter that he can talk trash and he backs it up in the ring. So a lot of fighters talk trash and they can't back it up, right? We right. seen Andy Warren right. talk that trash. He didn't back it up. We seen, uh, right. you know, we seen Andy Wilder talk that trash. And then once he ran into Tyson Fury, he couldn't back it up. You know what I mean? And somebody like Muhammad Ali talk trash, back it up. Mayweather talk trash, back it up. But it's so many fighters that talk trash and they can't back it up. You know? Right. Well, like they say, Ace Money, and this is an old saying, and it holds true even in modern time. If we knew who was going to win, they wouldn't have to fight. True? Yeah, yep, that's true. That's a true statement. If we knew who was going to win, brother, we wouldn't need all this. They wouldn't even have to fight. We have no idea who's going to win. We have to see. And we damn something to see. But right now, we go to. Yeah, we going to see that if the fight happens. That if Eddie Hearn can make a big fight happen, bro. You know what I mean? Look, if you look at Bob Arum's track record, Bob Arum, he made a he made the big fights. Eddie Hearn, like, people just start talking about Eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn been around for a long-ass time. Eddie Hearn, he was the promoter for uh, Kell Brook versus Sean Porter. Eddie Hearn promoted Carl Frotch when he was in the Super 6 against Andre Ward, the Super 6 tournament. Eddie Hearn been promoting for years, bro. You know what I mean? Eddie Hearn been in America for a long time. And it's been over two years now, you know, with, with the zone. Has he really, you know, done a great job with the zone? Did, did Eddie Hearn really give us the biggest fights in boxing? No, Bob Arum has. Bob Arum made Tiafimo Lopez versus Lomachenko. Bob Arum made Tyson Fury versus Deontay Wilder. Bob Arum made Manny Pacquiao versus Floyd Mayweather. He was a part of all of these major fights. When is Eddie Hearn going to make a super fight? When is Eddie Hearn going to make that super fight? And I'm Mr. DeZone. When is Eddie Hearn going to deliver for... For Devin Haney. When is Eddie Haney going to get Devin Haney that Ryan Garcia fight? When is he going to get that Tiafimo Lopez fight? Why Devin Haney wasn't given the Lomachenko fight? Why Demetrius Andre still on the shelf? And I'm an Eddie Hearn fan, but I'm calling it spade a spade. I'm keeping it real night. Uh, I'm keeping it real right now. Bob Arum made the biggest fights in boxing, while Eddie Hearn has not. So the pressure is on Eddie Hearn to deliver Shelton Moore. It is, bro. You've been in America for over two, two yeah, years. I'm washing my hands. Hold up. I'm washing my hands. Eddie Hearn been. What up, Eli? Zachary? Eli, I'm keeping Eli, it. Eli, my brother. What's happening, bro? What's good, Eli? And I'm, I'm Mister the Zone. I'm a, you know, I'm an Eddie Hearn fan. But you pay a lot of, uh, you pay, you pay fighters a lot of money. You do. I give him credit. He keep fighters active. But do you make the biggest fights in boxing? Do you make the super fights that everybody want to see? Anthony Joshua versus Deontay Wilder. Anthony Joshua versus Tyson Fury. Have you made those fights? No. Now, we seen Dylan White complain. Dylan White complained, you know, because Eddie Hearn hasn't given him the Anthony Joshua rematch, right? Right. I remember when Dylan White came to America, met up with Al Heyman and all of those guys because he right. was upset. He was upset with Eddie Hearn. Am I right or wrong, bro? You're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. But let me ask you this. Let me ask you this now. Do you believe that some of the hate he's getting from Aram and Frank Warren is because he just signed that big nine-figure deal with the zone and he's about to start snatching up fighters left and right? You think that could be it? I mean, uh, I don't think so, to be honest with you. Um, I mean, it, it might be a little bit of jealousy going on because he do got the big deal. He do got a lot of money uh, uh, around him. But at the end of the day, Eddie Hearn, he couldn't hold Bob Arum's jockstrap. He couldn't hold Frank Warren's jockstrap. These guys been doing this since Eddie Hearn's father been a promoter. <laughs> that Frank Warren was promoting with Eddie Hearn's father. Bob Arum been promoting Muhammad since Ali. The 70s. Since the 70s, yes. <laughs> since the 70s. Every Eddie big was... fight we've had in America, Bob Arum been a part of it. You are absolutely right. Yeah, we got to give John credit as well. He he was a part of those big fights. Eddie Hearn does a great job. Uh, he does a great job paying fighters a lot of money, keeping right. fighters. Active. 
but he doesn't give us the biggest fights that we want. Look at his track track record on the zone. The big he paid he paid Mikey Garcia seven million dollars to fight against Jesse Vargas. Are you serious? Yeah, that was, that was worthless. That was crazy. I I I wonder if they even made any money off that fight. No, 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 they did not. I know Mikey made his money. You know what I mean? Mikey got yeah. paid. Mikey got paid. Mikey got that bag. But the zone now, what you think about money. this? This this came out yesterday. What you think about this? Mikey said, "If he cannot get the Pacquiao fight, he wants Bud." I hope so, man. These guys do so much damn talking nowadays, bro. I don't know what to believe, bro. To be honest with you, man, it's like everybody calling somebody out, but ain't nobody really fighting. The, you, you know what I'm saying? The upper echelon type of guys, right. man. Right. You, know, you gotta give credit to Tiafimo Lopez. You, you know, making that Lomachenko fight happen. He took yeah. less money. You got to give Lomachenko credit for taking the pay cut to make that fight happen, bro. And right. Bob Aaron right. put on top rank. I'm still waiting for Eddie to make that big fight in America, to be honest with you, because that Column Smith Canelo fight, that wasn't it. You know what I mean? That was bullshit. That was bullshit. If you look at his track record, what's the biggest fights he put on? The zone. Canelo versus Daniel Jacobs? That was pretty or, much a or, or AJ, AJ versus uh, Ruiz. That's about the biggest fight. Now, that wasn't the biggest fight, remember, but that fight wasn't even supposed to be that big because right. we took that fight on a five weeks' notice. Remember, it was supposed to be Big Baby Miller versus yeah, Anthony. He popped Joshua. dirty, but he popped dirty. Yeah, you're right. The only reason that fight became big is because Anthony Joshua lost, and it was right. an upset. That was the only right. reason it was a big deal. But right. I mean, that's the only reason because right. the upset. But other than that, that wasn't a big fight at first, bro. You know what I mean? It wasn't. People thought AJ was going to knock him out. People yeah, I didn't even order it. You're right. I didn't even order it until I was mad because I'm like, God damn, he knocked him out and I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got I didn't order shit. We got somebody on the panel. Let's see. Eli and his mom, Eli Zachary. Eli Zachary, what's up, baby? What's, what's, up? Going, on? what's going on? We're going right, chill, man. Real shit right now. Yeah, we trying to get into it, man. Hey, let me ask you a question, bro. Mm -hmm. So... I was put up on game today that the Saudis are the ones that are supposed to put up the money for the AJ Fury fight, and mm -hmm. it's Ramadan right now, so all business is shut down. Do you think that's cap, or you think that's what it is? It's Ramadan, so all business shut down. I don't think that's... I don't know if that's accurate, to be honest. Shut to be honest. I mean, like, I, no, just like some I real shit, bro. Every day, life is going on, and that fight ain't happening tomorrow. That fight gonna happen two or three minutes, months. So, what's the problem with somebody typing up some motherfucking paperwork and Facts. sending that shit over to get the fight to get the fight done? I'm, but see, here's the, this: all I'm saying, I'm not a Muslim, and I don't live in Saudi Arabia, so I don't know how they do it over there. You see what I'm saying? Well, I'm. I'm so ain't nobody moving right now. Everybody sitting in the house sitting still. I mean, that's the rumor. Supposedly Ramadan, everything shuts down. You pray in the morning. You eat after sundown, and nothing happens during the day. The nobody day is for praying work. and fasting. That's the nobody rumor. So I don't know. Do no, ain't no working. Ain't no working during Ramadan. That's what it ain't. Well, if that's the case, then that's the case. I mean, if that's the case, that's the case. But reality of it is, is from what from what's already been said and I, uh, uh, about everything, is that uh, Joshua tra Trainer is not supposed to be available from like the end of June all the way through the end of August or, or, or early September because of the, the Olympics. Olympics. The Olympics, right? Yeah. So with that being said, it wasn't going to transpire right now anyway. So Facts. all of this talk back, back and forth with, with all of it, I'm honestly tired of hearing all of them talk. I just want to see the fights. I really want to see Wilder get his shot again and come back and just fight. I don't honestly care to hear none of the saga of all the cheating and everything. To me, the cheating was real. But right. outside of the cheating being real, I, I feel like everybody cheats. In, in, yeah. in boxing, and that's on your corner to notice what what was going on. That's on right. on on your team to call that shit. The same right. the same shit happened with Mayweather and Madonna. The same shit happened with 
perfecting and white. They call the gloves. This shit been happening. People stop telling that man that shit ain't happening. It makes him say more and more that it is. It makes the media say more and more that, yeah, it was cheating. Stop lying. We get enough of that every day. The motherfucker cheated. He cheated, but it happened. He got to deal with it the next time he get in the ring. You know, right. It is right. what it is. Right. But all this, all this fake ass promotion that they all doing, and say, yeah. "Oh, I want this motherfucker. I want this motherfucker." That's just to keep their name relevant. They shit it on YouTube media at first, but now they using the YouTube media to keep their name relevant. Right. So Facts. at, the end, at the end of the day, when these fights do come back, the biggest, the the, the bigger thing for me with you with, with, with YouTube is that these guys need to be on the front row. Because they kept mm. your name relevant during all of this shit, and you didn't pay facts. nothing for it. You know, facts. a lot of people, That's a lot a of people keep coming. Yeah, a lot of people keep coming, and the first thing they do to insult somebody's intelligence that's putting together this content is to say, right. "You building content off of me, motherfucker? Oh, we using each other." <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a transactional relationship. You're right. Yeah, yeah it is. You use me, I use you. Transactional. Yeah, you know that's why. I, that's, that's why you know what I fuck with Bill Haney because he'll come and he'll come fuck with everybody. You know, right? He wanted right. he wanted a few that'll come and come fuck with everybody. He don't give give a damn where you at, where your platform at, who you are. He gonna come mess with everybody. You know, some right. of these other I guys, not 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 so much. So I mean, at the end of the day, all these fighters just using the platforms to keep talking and keeping their name relevant. When it comes right. down to uh uh. Fighters who are actually fighting people. Uh, to me, right now, Teal Fimo, when he took that step towards Loma, he did his yeah. motherfucking thing. Uh, uh, Deontay Wilder, you know, what he can get in the ring with, he was doing it the whole time. You know, now hopefully all this arbitration and all this other shit subside and they get back in the ring and go do their thing. Errol Spence, right. been doing his thing. Jamil Charlo, been doing his thing. I want to concentrate on fire, fighters like that. Like, yeah, y'all get in here and do y'all thing because the rest of these motherfuckers is just doing all of this crazy ass shit. And Tia Fimo is getting ready to go that way right now with me because of the simple fact that he will not get in the fucking ring with Devin Haney for shit. And here, I mean, the the tank, I'm um, bro, come on. Go, well, go. the thing it, is now, let's keep it all the way clean. Uh, Tia Fimo's really running out of options, Ryan to retire. Yeah, Devin is the only one at thirty five. Cause who knows? I don't know. Tank is ever even coming back to the division. We don't know what Tank gonna do. We don't know what Tank gonna do. And, and real shit, Ryan looking. I don't know. Ryan looking real suspect, man. Well, that dude, man. I never saw that thing in him. I never saw that. It. You know what I'm talking about, Eli? That, that it. That, that, that like grit, when you was playing football. Down and get it. Yeah, like yeah. when you was playing football. You know, you put, you be on the field, but it's one dude on another team. You like, yeah, that motherfucker got it. Mm -hmm. I don't know about the rest of these motherfuckers. That motherfucker right there, he got it. You know what I'm saying? You, mom, you, you might say he exudes that confidence of a fighter, that 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 complex of a fighter, if right. he got it. If he ain't got yeah. it, it's like, he just ain't got, got that light. It ain't shining off of him. He ain't got the glow. Right. He, you, right. know, you remember, remember uh, Bruce Leroy had the glow? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You the know? glow. Exactly. Yeah. He don't have that. I remember yeah. I played with this dude Back in my days, I played with this dude named Gaston Green. You might have never heard of him. Gaston Green wound up playing for the Miami Dolphins for a little while. Went to UCLA. He played at Gardena High School. Now, Gardena was trash, Eli. We used to wear their ass out. But we'd be beating them like 36 to 3, shit like that. And Gaston Green would have 212 yards. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> it ain't shit to do. We can't do shit with him. We can beat these other motherfuckers, but we can't do shit with him. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. This motherfucker special. He's different. You know what I'm saying? And that's what you see in the great ones like the Spences, the motherfucking uh the, the Jamel Charlos, the Crawfords. You say, yeah, this motherfucker's different, man. There's something different about this dude. You know what I'm talking about? Hey. It's something different about Crawford, but he just don't make my list of people fighting top quality. Top top camps, and I'm undecided on that because I want to see him make the fights, but then it's always the fucking politics, and I don't want to blame him every time because these suits is navigating this shit too. 
So it's like it's just fucked up. You on mute. You on mute. You on mute. It's to the point now, bro. It's to the point now, bro, where, where, where Bud is getting old. No matter how yeah. we think about it, Bud is 33. He's going to yeah. be old soon. He got to get these fights now. Yeah. You get, you got to get these fights now because by the time you're 35 and 36, you're not going to be able to keep up with them youngsters. He can't you see and then he ain't gonna be able to say that they aged him out. They ain't age you out. Your promotional company aged you out. Facts. That's why I'm hoping. I'm hoping that in October, when that contract is up, he gonna fuck with Eddie Hearn. I don't care who we fuck with, as long as we get the fights. You know, most people say, "Oh, he needs to come to PBC. He need to do his best for you." Yeah, but just give us the who, fights. Because who knows who says that he goes to PVC and he still don't get the fight. We never got the Thurman Spence fight. Just because you go to PVC don't mean you're gonna get the fight. You see what I'm well, saying? We get the Thurman Spence fight because Thurman was out for two years. Mm-hmm. Then the motherfucker come back and get beat by Manny Pacquiao and fuck up the whole goddamn shit. <laughs> <laughs> he fucked the whole alpha part up. He did. Bro, fucking uh, uh, Spence, uh, Spence probably still mad at his ass. You motherfucker, <laughs> we had the fight shit. They was, it wouldn't be no Danny Garcia, bro. Yeah, if exactly. He beat, if, if if he if he, if he beats Manny Pacquiao, then Spence fights Sean, and then Spence fights uh Thurman, and then we are already moving on with that bill to Crawford this year. The whole year would have been open for him and Crawford. Facts. That's facts, brother. You speaking facts. You speaking facts. You still at the house or you on the road yet, Eli? No, I'm no, I'm at the house. When I when I get out, bro, I get out and come back to the house. I get out and go do my deliveries. I go to the uh, little distribution center, pick up my uh pick up my, my route, do my route, and then come on back home. Yeah, yeah. I was just hollering at uh my boy Santos earlier. He just got back in the pad. He said he had to lay it down because hey, he got a move, man. Yeah, he, he getting it, man. He getting it. He getting it. He was telling me he was, he was enlightening me on some shit today. He get it, man. Yep. JC, uh, uh, JC, you're a dope fan. What would he say? He said Eli Wilder fanboy. No, he's not. Come on, brother. That, that, hey, and he's a dope fan. He's smoking a big bag of dope right now. <laughs> Every time I come in there, I got somebody want to troll me for telling the truth. Look, I said Wilder going to have to fight and do his thing. Right. You fight like you're supposed to fight. Right. You know, the veteran tricks, they all come, they, they all come down to a cheat. It's cheating. It is what it is. At the end of the day, I, I said, I don't even want to hear no more about the whole cheating shit. I want them to get back in the ring and fight. I want to see Wilder do his thing. Am I a fan boy because I want to see Wilder win? If that's what you're saying, then fuck it. It is what it is. Yeah, I want to see Wilder win. Yeah. Outside of that though, I ain't got no excuses. I ain't got none of that, none of the other shit. I'm just gonna tell you the real. If the cheat, the cheat in, in, in boxing, it is what it is. You can tell yeah. me whatever the hell you want to tell. Yeah, Outside of cheap. that, on pro grace, how pro grace is a high job when the only fight he lost is to the dude that's going for uh undisputed right now, and he had yeah, that makes a, a lot of sense. Tat, uh, tip for tat yeah. fight with him that w- w- was close at the end. But he just didn't do enough to win in another man's land, and he started out slower. If I tell you that, and I tell you shit, I still believe that the man got some fight in him and can do his thing. How is that a hype job? Yeah, and 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 for JC, how you know he gonna beat Ramirez? You just penciling him in. He's not gonna beat Ramirez, in my opinion. I think Ramirez gonna break him down to the body and knock his punk ass out. Nah, hell, nah. He couldn't even knock out Victor Post. But I respect your opinion, but he sure couldn't knock out Victor Post. I thought Victor Post, the old ass, was out boxing him. To be honest with you, you know, he also had a split decision, a split decision victory over Jose Zabita. So he let me ask you a question, H. Let me ask you a question right quick on Victor Postal. How many motherfuckers have knocked out Victor Postal? I didn't say knock him out, but I said Victor Postal outboxed him, though. Okay. Victor Postal okay. Good. Good yeah. Boxing. Okay. Let's keep but it live. So. Box, uh, Crawford, I know Victor Foster putting out by Josh Taylor. Josh Taylor got up in his ass, though. You feel me? So, you right. know, he, yeah, so, you know, so yeah, Postal is not, uh, Postal is not, uh, 
No Uber driver, bro. So I don't call for this, bro. I don't yeah. call any for this, bro. To Uber driver, postal yeah. box. Yeah, yeah postal the fight. So you know that's that's kind of uh, you know that's cool. But you know, and anybody who calls Regis Parkways a, a a hype job just really don't know too much about boxing. But I ain't gonna just I ain't gonna shit on that man's credentials. He might know more about boxing than me. Who knows? I'm not going to shit on that man like that. Fighter, but they were piping him up a little bit. Then when he went to Josh Taylor, you know, Josh yeah. Taylor, you know, I, I, pretty, I thought Josh Taylor beat him up. You know what I mean? But Regis, he, he fought. So he didn't duck. He came to fight. I give Regis his credit, though, for taking that fight, entering the tournament. You know, right. getting the tournament, you know, you fighters need respect for getting those tournaments because you can't duck nobody in the tournament. You know, right. I Regis as a fighter. I respect him. And I know he's from Baton Rouge like uh, Eli, so I know Eli's going to ride for him. Well, my thing is this. My thing is this. Here's my whole point right here. Let's see what Josh Taylor do in his next fight. Because boxing is a what-have-you-done-for-me-lately sport. <laughs> and we don't give a fuck about what you did to progress. What you going to do to Ramirez? <laughs> sure, well, are you talking about Taylor? Yeah. What you going to do to Ramirez? <laughs> fuck progress. That's over with. What you going to do to Ramirez? <laughs> I got, t- I got boxing. I got boxing. Hey, no bullshit. I like Josh Taylor, bro. Me too. I do too. He, he I just don't think. Shit. I just don't think that he's just gonna walk through Jose Ramirez like that. I don't see that. I can see him outboxing. I'm walking through him. He can outbox him. Hey, he can outbox him, but he's going to have to change his style to outbox yeah. him. Most people yeah. that, that 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 what you call have that bad fight with. Ramirez outside of uh, uh, Zapata, but that shit was crazy as fuck because nobody thought Zapata was going to stand in there and, 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 and fight like that with uh, Ramirez. That was his right. best fight. You know, he showed up that night, but Ramirez does have that power to put your ass down, you know, and he 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 can he can punch and he makes sure he makes most boxers respect him and change their game to where they do fight, which is where he actually uh, where they do box, which is the way he actually does win. Will yeah, he makes you fight will, his fight? Exactly. Will Will Taylor be able to box when Taylor really wants to be on the front foot and and overwhelming you a little bit more and be a little bit faster than? Will he be able to box the whole fight without getting caught with something big? That's to be that's to be seen. You know, because Taylor is a good fighter, and uh, honestly. He probably should be higher on the pound for pound list than where people put him if he even makes some of these pound for pound lists. Because people that don't really know boxing, that's just going off popularity, a lot of them miss him on their list. But Taylor is a, is, is a damn good fighter. Hell right. yeah. He could box yeah. his ass. Now, uh, I see uh, my boy a Silver Surfer said Josh Taylor is a hype job. He's going to sleep. You can't say he's a hype job. He beat Victor Postal. He won the World Boxing Super Series. He beat Regis Pro Grace. He beat Ivan Berichick. So you got to get a dude credit, bro. It's easy to call a fighter a high job. It's easy to say that. You know, I'm not, I mean, I just have your opinion at the end of the day, but he's not a hype job, bro. He's not. But the thing is, you got to remember, everybody got everybody got their little bias, man. Because, I'm, you know, I get killed, and Eli didn't cuss me out on numerous occasions for calling Lomachenko a high job. <laughs> Like, I, mean, hey, I ain't gotta be a fan of a fighter to say that they can fight their ass off. Right, like, right. I'm not. I'm. 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 Um. I believe that Devin will beat Lomachenko. I believe that Tank can beat Lomachenko because I don't believe that Lomachenko hit Tank with enough to make him change up and not pick that shot on him. Tank, if he, if you, are, if Tank can take your punch and look in the fire and pick that shot on you. If he hits you with that motherfucker, he got a one hit a quitter. I believe yeah. that that uh uh the movement of Shakur and boxing ability and just the discipline in and out of the ring of Shakur gets him there. But I believe right. outside of those fighters right there, yeah, and Till Fimo who's beat him already right. outside of those fighters right there, Loma is top five. He's a top five fighter. So how can you call a top five fighter trash? Well, I tell you what. I'm a, I'm gonna hit you with a bombshell right now, Eli. Are you ready for it? Uh-huh. N- uh huh. Nakatani gonna stop him. I, I'm I'm not I'm not gonna discount that because I'm kind of feeling like ooh we. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the way Nakatani and Tommy been fighting here lately, not yeah. shit. 
Oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, Nakatani gonna stop you. Uh, Ace Money think I'm crazy. Tank can't be, D Nice said Tank can't beat Lomachenko. And that's why they. D Nice, you tripping. Real. You my boy, D Nice, but you tripping right there. I mean, Loma, I, Loma, Loma can't keep Tank off him. Loma, you don't have enough power to keep Tank off of him. Yo, Loma, Loma wanted to fight Tank for years. He's been calling out Tank and he, Tank. That's why I'm not even finna, I wouldn't even finna argue with that. With exactly what you saying, H-Money, he called out Tank for years. Tank got to take some of them fights. So mm -hmm. I'm not even finna defend that shit. That's, you're not finna have, you know, your, your partner that's always talking shit, but when he get in a fight, everybody got to fight for him and shit. Yeah, no, I'm not dude, bro. I'm not but I'm just saying, dude. I'm just looking at skill for skill, and it would Tank Davis is very simple. Whoever he fights, if you don't have enough pop to keep him off of you, you probably gonna have a long night. And that's how I feel. That's how I feel. I I, I can I can say I see Tank Tank winning the fight, but if you say Tank ducking, or if you say they ain't fought because Tank came, I ain't gonna tell you you're wrong. And the tank should have been fought long ago. That's why you got to give T.F.M.O. Lopez and Devin Haney credit. They was willing to step up and fight Loma while Tank didn't want that smoke at all. Loma wanted smoke with Tank for years. I remember yeah. Tank saying, oh, he wants to rush me because he's older and I'm not ready right now. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> all that duck and talk. It's, he said there's no point of him taking that fight at this moment. You know, he, he could lose. He said he ain't going to fight him right now. If he could lose, he, he might lose. So he, he wanted to wait. You know what I mean? So That uh, wasn't Tank. That wasn't Tank. That was, that was Mayweather talking. No, I'm saying, you know, <laughs> said, there's no point of him fighting right now or taking a loss. He said that himself. No, no I'm, I'm saying that was Mayweather talking. Tank was just verbalizing it. But that was Mayweather talking. Hey, I'm not gonna I don't believe Tank is scared, 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 scared of nobody. I don't think Tank is scared of nobody. I think Tank will fight anybody. That's why he got handlers to save him from himself. We gonna well, set you up the way we want to set you up. Easy to say, oh, it's Mayweather, and put the blame on Mayweather. Listen, Mayweather said he wanted to make that Lomachenko fight before. He said it. He said it, and Tank was the one saying, "I'm about to leave Mayweather after Mayweather said that." So, nah, wow. man. We really don't try to put the blame on everybody else. So we got the, the the fighters need to start being responsible for some of these things, man. To be honest, yeah. some of the fighters they, they, they can speak for they they can speak for themselves. Cause I'm not finna speak and put no words in their mouth to dress that shit up and make it sound good. Hey, the well, shit look, is what you, it is. The fight ain't never happened, and the fight was offered. You know, you're preaching to the choir because I got uh, Barrio stopping tank. You know that, right? I'm, yeah. I'm scared that I'm, 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 I'm scared of that. I'm pulling for once again. I'm pulling for tank, but I'm scared Barrios might get on his ass because he's a, he he's a volume fighter that 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 comes and applies a lot of pressure. He has more reach. He has more. He, he's a much bigger man, and it is what it is. And the the you moving up to a new division, and you did not get the knockout until late. On a guy that was that that had a popped Achilles for ten rounds, even though you were popping his ass and banging him up, I mean it is what it is. Well, you know, now I, I'm, I'm going to the fight though. Guy. I'm so I'm so confident, Eli. I didn't really bought my I got my room already. I'm going to the fight. I want to see this upset live and in living color. Hey, man, that I'm card cool, that card gonna be lit. You got Lubin versus uh, uh versus Rosario. Man, man. Be a war right there. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna be in Atlanta. Oh my God! It's gonna be fire, bro. It's gonna be fire, man. You know what I mean? So I like that card right there by the PBC. I think that's one of the best cards of the year so far. Man, boxing got to give us some some bigger fights, bro. I do like uh, Josh Taylor, Jose Ramirez for undisputed. Very good fight. Tank versus Barrios. I think that's a underrated fight. Good oh, uh, Ace Money, Ace Money. Did you make up your mind yet? Are you going or what? Oh, uh, to which fight? The Devin Haney fight. Yeah, you made up your mind yet? Uh, uh, right now I haven't. Well, I talked to Bill a couple of days ago, but I mean, yeah, hopefully I can make it out there. Shit, I want to go. I hope so. You know, I was gonna go. I was gonna be there to holler at you, but uh, they yeah, hit me we, with that ticket price. I was like, ooh, that's a little bit above my pay grade, there, partner. <laughs> Said May twenty ninth. Yeah, I probably could go. Yeah, that'd be fire. Yeah, I couldn't right. fuck with that thirteen fifty. I, 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 I ain't got it like that, Eli. <laughs> I ain't got it like that. <laughs> Let's say, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute. Yeah, thirteen fifty. What for floor seats? That's, that's the tickets they got left. The shit damn near sold out. Oh, you just wasn't early enough. 
Yeah, that one earlier. Ain't, yeah. ain't, ain't nothing wrong with saying shit. I can't afford to be there. I, 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 I was too late. Shit. Ain't nothing yeah, wrong I can't with that. What? Eli ain't paying no thirteen. A ain't paying no thirteen fifty unless I plan that shit out. Man. Yeah, I ain't hey. got it like that. I, mean, I got a little bread put away, but I ain't got no bread for that. <laughs> but I ain't coming. To, yeah, that's not necessary yeah. unless I'm yeah. just planning on going to a big event and I want to go do it. I mean, yeah. shit, I was too late. I was too late. Thirteen fifty. Shit. Hey, I plan that. I plan that two, three months in advance. This is what I wanted to do for my thirteen fifty. What last minute? Wait a minute. <laughs> uh-uh. 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 Did I call? And I and I called about the tank fight after that. I said, okay, that's that's out. What's up with the tank fight? And the lady told me that the tank the tickets don't go on, they don't put the tickets on sale until a month before the fight. So yeah, I know I'm not if, if you're not if you not if you don't jump on it, especially a fighter like Devin that that that's selling out a fight, you know, yeah. and a fight that that's that's been having so much steam. You know, he, you you you're not gonna be able to get uh good tickets. Uh, right, 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 decent, right. Not at a decent price. At a working at a working man's price, a good yeah, ticket. Yeah, exactly. You you gotta jump on top of that, you know. But I'm pretty yeah, sure. I'm pretty I, I, sure. I spend three fifty, four hundred. I'll yeah. even go as far as five. I'll spend that. But thirteen fifty, nah, I can't do that. I phone on one ticket. I can't do that. At the and at the last minute. But I'm I mean, I'm sure. He's gonna put on a damn good performance, and I'm sure shit, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a damn good crowd. Cause right now it's looking like that fight is already sold out, except for just those floor, those uh, few floor seats that are left. Exactly, exactly. That's why I was telling H mm-hmm. Money, don't look don't look and give horse in the mouth, man. That's the event you might want to be at. So if somebody talking about come out and we got you. Get on out there. Yeah, hopefully. Hey, hey, Danny the Great is in the fucking chat going in. That boy don't <laughs> like Tank. Ooh, wee. He done called the man a cur and everything. Tank got quit in him. <laughs> say, God damn. He, he said That's the man Danny, the Danny can't stand him. Tank. He do not like Tank. He do not like Tank at all. The myth of the matter was they say that Danny is a kid. Hey, he, 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 he looking real petty and childish right now. God damn. <laughs> hey, DJ, where you at, man? You still working? That's Jerry Jones. He must be still working. Who? Where you at? Where you at? But, uh, hey, I'm going to say this though real quick. Uh, man, uh, somebody made a made a great point in the comment section. It was my boy, uh, JD. JD, he said... Uh, Mario Barrios look like food again. Akamadov, don't let the size fool you. It's a mismatch. He did have a tough fight against Akamadov. I remember that. I and check this out. Check this out, JD. Check this out, JD. That was against Akamadov. That's not against Tank. Two different me? fighters. You hear me, show? Two different fighters. Yeah. Okay, I want to finish the point. Now, he did have a tough fight against Akamadov. Uh, Akamadov actually. So shut his eye. Barrio's eye was swollen shut, but Barrio's kept fighting. I believe in the twelfth round, Barrio's really hurt him, hurt him real bad. And Barrio's got the dub, even though it was a tough fight. He shows right. you that he got the heart and he could fight, fight his way through. Now we never right. seen Tank in a tough fight. This is Tank first fight at one forty. We seen when Tank mo- moved up to one thirty five, his power wasn't the same. Even though he dropped the uh, drop. He dropped Gamboa four times. Gamboa kept getting back up. Now, in the smaller weight classes, Tank was knocking everybody out. You know what I mean? The way he knocked out Leo Santa Cruz, he wasn't able to do a Gamboa like that. You know what I mean? So, I mean, it's going to be a tough test for Tank. But I do give Tank credit for moving up to 140. Maybe he thought it would be an easy fight, but it's really not. Barrios, he knows how to box, bro. Devin Haney told me. He told me himself he's far Barrios, and Barrios can fight, bro. So um, I really want to ask Devin who he think gonna win this fight. I would love to ask Devin Haney that. I need to holler at him about that. That would right. be a good, well, see, that that would be a good question. Mm-hmm. We were talking that. about that. Me and uh, H was talking about that earlier, Eli, and I we, we were discussing the same thing. You know, you did that against Akamedov. Mm-hmm. You had a tough fight with Akamedov. Akamedov ain't Tank. Just because somebody else did something, don't mean Tank can do it. We're going to find out. That's why they got to fight. fight. So he was an Olympian. He wasn't no bum. 
Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, we got to see what he do against Tank. What what can Tank do? Can Tank do what Akamadov did? We don't know. That's why they got to fight. Yo, I'm surprised. Hey, that- hey, 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 pull up Akamadov's box rate. Okay, it, 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 I got you. He was yeah. one of those fighters from Uzbekistan. He really didn't have like that many fights, like a MJ, like MJ. But the dude could fight. He could fight. I watched the fight. He could scrap. You know what I mean? So, to be honest, I'm kind of surprised they even made this fight with Tank because I heard Mayweather said Tank ain't going up to 140, and now Tank fighting at 140. So, I'm kind of surprised they even made that fight happen, dog. And Danny the Great, you can't have your opinion. It's cool. You can have your opinion. It's all love, baby. We just talk shit. Yeah, everybody. Hey, I, hey, I think he got Tank fucked up, though, because Tank, he, you can say Leo was hitting Tank with this and that shit. When Tank decided, okay, oh, that's what you hitting with? Oh, let me slip that bitch. And what happened? Oh, he was asleep. <laughs> he was asleep. But what did you say earlier, Eli? You said it. You hit the nail on the head. About five minutes ago, you said if a motherfucker don't have enough pop to keep yeah. Tank off him, he's in trouble. Now, yeah. Barrios might have enough pop. We he don't know. That's that why we got to find out. I, I, I also <laughs> said that Tank don't have a problem standing in the, staying in the fire to get his off. I haven't seen yeah. him have a problem with that when it, when it's a, when it get into a it, 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 motherfucker punching on him and, and shit it does not change the complexion of who he is that okay he he seems to have a mean streak in him when he gets hit with something mean and I can out punch you I can I can punch harder than you and I got more dog than you he bites down it's a difference so I want to see when that when he has that type of pressure on him the the bigger fighter and he's he he's not the one like people are always saying he's always fighting guys that are smaller than him now he's fighting a bigger pressure fighter that has some boxing skills and has some pop and if he's still that same dog then he answers a lot of questions for me facts that's facts that's facts that I just don't think he can overcome the link I just don't think Tank can overcome the link I could be wrong but we damn sure gonna see me too. as a matter of fact I'm a go see I'm not gonna watch it on TV. I'm gonna go see. I, I ain't gonna lie. I'm just gonna officially call Danny the Great a hater because uh, that dude spam in the chat hating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see this? Look, you know, Botek right there. Uh, Botir Akamadov, eight wins, seven knockouts. He got one loss to Barrios. He actually came back after the Barrios loss in his last fight. He knocked somebody out in the first mm-hmm. round, but he fought Ray Perez. That thing kind of a bomb. Ray Perez with 11 losses, you know, so dang. I think, yeah, I don't know. That's a good point, though, that uh, boy, uh, Jim B made. Oh, he, he fought George. So, this the dude the yeah. guy who just beat actually fought against George Cambosis before he fought against him. He up. George Cambosis went eight rounds with uh, this same dude, Perez, and Akamadoff knocked out he knocked out Perez in the first round. Cambosis went eight rounds with him. Went to a decision with him. And it shows Akamadoff finished him off in one round. And George Cambosis went eight rounds with him. The decision. You know what I mean? So, like I said, I think he was. What do we do, team. homie? Wait a minute. What do we do if uh, T.O. loses this fight? Would that be a big upset? He ain't gonna lose the fight. Hell yeah, that'd be a big upset. I, I don't think, and no, I don't think he loses this fight. But if that dude has a a Joe uh, 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 a Jeff Horn type fight against him, then who? He might not survive over there, bro. He might not. He 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 might, he might not survive the judges, but he should get him out of there, bro. He should knock him out. He is. He is, bro. He gonna destroy that dude, bro. That's why he wanted to fight him. Why you think T.O. wanted that dude so bad? Because he know what he gonna do to him. He know that gonna be easy, easy matchup for him. He wanted that fight bad with Cambosis, bro. He was pushing hard for that fight. Because he know it's gonna be like a coming out party. He gonna do his thing. Styles makes fights, bro. For sure. Yo, Eli, what you think about this NFL draft? You mess with the NFL? What you think about it? I'm not even going to lie to you, bro. My mind has been so much on 
you you this these last two years are the years that my kids start college and stuff and me transitioning to trying to trying to do more self sufficient shit. I've been so much on getting money, bro. I ain't even watched no football in the last in the last two years, bro. Everything every, the last two, three years, really, everything about, about my life have been my kids, my family, getting and, and trying to get to the money, bro. I respect that, E. Gotta respect that. <laughs> I don't know perfect. what's going on. I don't even know who the top draft picks is right now. He's going to tell right now, though. I ain't going to lie. This shit about to go down, though. NFL. Uh, you know who the top is, H. That's Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, they said everybody. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sunshine. <laughs> Why you yeah, did the sunshine off of, uh, off of uh, Remember the Titans? Yeah. yeah, Sunshine. sunshine. So, hey. I'll, now, now, okay. Yeah, when y'all give me the context of who who the who the top draft picks is, I did say I, I I have seen him play already, and I can say Sunshine. I think that he's gonna be like the next Carson Wentz, but more durable. I think he's gonna be a good quarterback in the uh, uh in the future. I think he's gonna come r- right in and start for somebody and make a good uh, make a good uh showing for himself. Yo, that kid is nice though. Uh, what's his name? Uh. What's his name? Fields. Justin Fields from Ohio State. Yo, he ran a 4-4. He ran a 4-4-4, bro, at quarterback. They say he's slipping in the draft. I want to see who picks up this kid, Justin Fields. He's real nice. But you know what? Because of the style of offense at at, at Ohio State, bro, most of the quarterbacks don't transition so well. I, I hate to say it because they be so talented, and I'm like, JT Barrett, please pick it up, figure it out, or somebody. But most of that, most of the quarterbacks don't transition well into the uh, NFL because of that spread offense type deal. But here recently, we do have a, a quarterback that comes from that type of system at Texas Tech uh, uh, and, and, and Buddy and, K- and KC that just won the Super Bowl. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right about yeah. that. He home. comes out of that same type of style of offense, you know. But the thing about it is, he was more of a passer in uh, in, in in that offense. Some of these guys that come out of the spread offense that are used to running, the finding the gaps and and, and and running and pass second, you know, that be the issue. So I mean, Pat, uh, Patrick Mahomes, he was always a gunslinger, even even in even in college, he wasn't a run first guy, you know. Mm-hmm. Hey, it's crazy. They got fans at the uh. At- at the NFL draft, it's kind of, you know, it feels weird seeing fans back at events. And some of them even got masks on. So it's like they really trying to get the country going back to normal, man. You know what I mean? I, well, that's what it's looking like to me. Bro, if you was in Texas, that like Texas is different, bro. It, it, it's like it's you got people that still wearing masks. You know, even myself, I still wear my mask because I ain't got that 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 shot. And I'm, I'm, I'm really waiting because shit. Of some people still coming out with blood clots and shit from that Johnson to Johnson shit, you know, it just wasn't long enough. But that's my personal choice. I ain't gonna go against nobody to go get it right now. Yeah, I but took uh, both but uh, huh? And I took both of them shots to be honest with you. You know what I mean? So I think I took the Pfizer one, if I ain't mistaken. Yeah, I, th- and- I, I thought you said you took the Pfizer because you got you got two rounds. The yeah. Johnson and Johnson shot was only one round, and a lot of people got blood clots, and there's been some deaths behind it. But that shot was made with more of uh, lower income areas in mind, and 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 jail and just uh, uh, jail houses, and being able to mass produce it and hurry up and get it out there. So, it's I mean, it come with it, bro. Side effects come with it, but. At the end of the day, a lot of people are moving around and being able to do what they need to do and getting the economy uh, back stimulated and, you know, getting back in the floor of things. I'm all for that because I want to see it, but I just want people to do it safe. You know, if you need to wear a mask, uh, wear a mask. If you sitting behind somebody in line, shit, maintain your distance until we figure this shit all the way out. Everybody not as fortunate as everybody to have the greatest of health, whether it's you yourself or somebody in your family, you know. Mm-hmm. But yep, beyond I'm, that, shit, yeah, yeah, I'm glad to see it back, uh, getting back to normal. Yeah, it's crazy. It's like it's weird seeing that everything go back to normal. But I, uh, to be honest with you, um, I seen some on the news yesterday where they were saying when like when people actually take those shots, you know what I mean? They say they a motherfucker in the hospital, they feel they feel sick, and they said when people take the shots when they at the hospital, they start feeling better, and a lot of people start going back home. So they're saying the shots start making people feel better. So uh, I gotta ask Shelton. Shelton, did you take your second shot yet? 
Come off Yo, mute. Me. It's all good. He probably cooking, whipping some up. But yeah, yeah, I took that second shot, Eli. That motherfucker was strong as hell. Like at first, it didn't feel like nothing, but like actually, like you know, um, like a couple hours later, you know, I took the shot probably like three in the afternoon at five five a.m. in the morning. I start feeling kind of funny and shit. You know what I mean? So, Say, bro, when you told that fucking story on Red on Red shit, I died laughing, bro. You said, yeah. bro, you sound like no people had put some dope in your shit. <laughs> like it felt like, it like I was on some heroin or some shit. Like yeah, I ain't that's what it sounded like, like bro. <laughs> that, Ooh, that man. Man. <laughs> Hey, I laughed with my wife so hard. I said, "This man say this shit had him out of there like he was stuck." I was, e, I was shaking like a motherfucker. Like it was, it was crazy because me and my brother took the shot. So when we got back home. He was acting dumb and shit, playing like he acting like he's shaking. Like you know what I mean? He was trying to be funny. Oh, look at me, I'm shaking and shit. So I was like, man, stop playing, dog. You feel me? Stop playing. You don't know what could happen. So next thing you know, nigga, I start actually shaking and shit. I'm like, damn. I was tripping out. I was bugging, but my brother was like, hey, yo, hit this blunt real quick. See what happens. <laughs> I, down a little bit. I ain't gonna lie. That shit calmed me down. I was like, yo, maybe this is, but you know, maybe, you know what I'm saying? This make you feel better after taking a shot. Smoke a little hey, blunt. Boy, you sound like they speedballed your ass when you said that shit. Well, we like got, uh, we got, uh, Urban Meyer down in Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. They got the first pick. Jacksonville's on the clock. And uh, if you're going to build a franchise, what's the first player you need to have? A quarterback. quarterback. Got to start with a quarterback. Got to start with a quarterback. But who's down there in Jacksonville right now at quarterback? They got that kid. What's that dude's name with that funny mustache? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? From, uh, yeah, he came from uh, Washington State. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Didn't wasn't he yeah. with the Giants at, at, at first? Yeah, he was. They yeah, traded yeah. to Jacksonville. The quarterback. He went to Jacksonville. He was with the Giants first. They traded to Jacksonville. He got to start when Blake Bortles got traded. Yeah, because he was so brought, hot. Uh, but he started out hiding with the Giants, and then he, once people started putting pressure on, pressure on his ass, he melted. Yeah, and then uh, remember they they got the boy uh, from Philadelphia down there, at Jacksonville, right? They gave all that money to back up the Nick dude Foles. that won the Super Bowl, Nick, Nick Foles. Foles. Yeah, and he got the and he got hurt in the first game last year. They had to put the kid in. Mm hmm. So th yeah. that's what I thought. Nick Foles would be the quarterback, but I was just saying that last night. Remember we were talking Sheldon, and I was saying yeah. Nick Foles, uh, 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 Bradford, and Golf. They put me in that same realm where they all yeah. smart quarterbacks, but they're not durable enough, and they right. just seem they just seem to. Be like good backups. They may right, be right, good right. backups and, and right. clipboard holders. They may be them quarterbacks that can come in and, and, and in the mid to late part of your season where you need to get your veteran a rest. Y'all on a high right, 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 right. Like over a, the hump. like a uh, Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick done made a millions of dollars being a backup. Bro, remember Brian Fitzpatrick been in the league forever. <laughs> remember uh, Steve Berline. Steve yeah. Berline, league forever, making millions of dollars is back. Steve Berline made millions backing up a Troy Aikman and then went to Carolina and wasn't yeah. shit. It wasn't nothing. Hey, you know, he was, another one. Uh, uh, what's the boy name? Steve DeBerg. Steve DeBerg was a high quality backup for how many years? Yeah. Like 20 years? <laughs> yeah. Now, y'all remember Dante Culpepper, man. Dante Culpepper was nice with the Vikings back in the day. He though. was until he got hurt. Once he got hurt, he it was a wrap. And then not only that, once he lost Randy, because Dante Culpepper thing wasn't accuracy is that he had a good arm and he was willing to take that chance. Yeah, he could, throw deep, long, he could throw deep ball real well. He threw, he threw the deep ball well. So if he can put it up there and throw the deep ball to Randy, he had something. But not only that, Randy took so much coverage away from the field, his reads were easier to make. When you start having to not pull a safety over and you can sneak and play robber and underneath and, 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 and shit, you can drop the linebackers underneath. It, there's no tight end there in, in the situation. That makes it hard for a quarterback that's used that's just a big arm that's used to just going deep or used to dinking and dumping here and there right. just for safety, you know. Right, because uh because Randy Moss, all you gotta do is get close to him. Just mm -hmm. get close. <laughs> his get radius is crazy. Yeah. His radius get is crazy. Yeah, he'll go get it for you. What Man, he had, like real 41 inch, 41 inch vertical along yeah, with 4 2 speed. Yeah, and, he'll go and, get it for you. 
Yeah, and, and was said to have really four one speed. Right. He was unstoppable with Randy Moss yeah. back then. Yeah. Like, bro. Only problem, the only problem Randy Moss had is he knew how good he was, and sometimes he took plays off. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Some, 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 yeah. What, what, uh, say he went into to that prima donna mode sometimes. Yeah. She, yeah. He, you know, sometimes he, he, he was like prime time. You know, yeah. hey, it's a business decision. Goddamn, I'm tired. I go deep in the. I, 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 I go hard. Next play, yeah. them, them whiff tackles that Dion had out there. Yeah. You know, like Dion. What but I want to ask you. I want to ask you a question. Now, be honest. Mm -hmm. Cause you around my age, maybe Ace Money can answer too. The two greatest athletes you've ever seen in your life. Who are they? In any sport? Any sport. Uh, Bo Jackson. One, number one. Um, man, it might be Bo Jackson and Dion, bro. Dion hopped yeah. off the plane and went and, and played baseball, hopped off that bit and came to Monday Night Football <laughs> and jumped yeah, in the pads and played the game. Mm -hmm. People don't realize that Deion Sanders is the only man to play in a Super Bowl and a World Series in the same fucking season. <laughs> Deion was a man. Something yeah, special. Was. You remember yeah. when they used to have a cartoon on called the Pro Stars? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I remember that shit. They, they, showed, they showed you who was the baddest motherfuckers. Yeah, Deion was bad. But Bo Jackson, I'm telling you, H, it's a little bit before your time. But Bo Jackson? Man, look here. <laughs> what do you want? He played four baseball. One nine. Uh, H Money. 419 at 235 pounds. Come on, man. But I heard Marcus <laughs> Allen is actually better than him still, though. When he, he went to the Raiders, and they, I don't know, they did Marcus Allen dirty. They Marcus, Marcus Allen was a better all around football player than yeah. most people. But Marcus yeah. Allen could play multiple positions. But yeah. far as a running back, couldn't nobody fuck with ball. Yeah, Marcus can line up in the slot. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like on multiple yeah. occasions when receivers went down and got hurt with the Chiefs and the Raiders, Marcus would line out there, line up out there in the slot and run a route and and, and, and make a difference. Marcus you know, was good enough know. to play quarterback. He was good enough to play yeah, quarterback. Yeah. yeah. Then you know who else was a bad one? Sterling Sharp. Boy, I hate his career. Yeah. You remember you remember when Sterling Sharp had to line up and play quarterback, bro, and get yeah. under center in Green yeah. Bay? Yeah, I mean, was a Sharp. wide receiver. Sterling Sharp is still the only man to have seven straight 1,300-yard receiving seasons. Nobody's ever done that. Nobody. Mm -hmm. Sterling Sharp was a monster. Shannon ain't shit compared to his big brother. Sterling was a yeah. beast. Was a beast. <laughs> was a when beast. He the, when he went to the Hall of Fame, Shannon Sharp said, he said, I'm the only person in the Hall of Fame, he said, that is the second best player in his own family. He said, yeah. I'm the only person in the Hall of Fame and I'm the second best player in my own family. Yeah, like, and everybody knew it. Mm -hmm. The question back then, tell them I'm lying, uh, Eli, the question back then was who was better, Sterling Sharp or Jerry Rice? <laughs> that was That's the question. What it was. That's what it was. That was the question. That was the only question. Sterling Sharp or Jerry, uh, uh, Jerry Rice? You know, that was the only question out there. That's how cold Sterling Sharp was. But you, you know something I, I saw on... Um, on YouTube, I saw uh, them naming the greatest point guards uh, uh, of all time. I could not believe that they left Magic Johnson off of that fucking list. Who who list was it? Because they haters. Because they haters. Because they haters. I, I forgot exactly who list it was. But, but dude, I've seen that multiple times where they leave Magic off of that list. And Magic is possibly the nastiest, nastiest and most dominant point guard to ever play in the league. And then not only you, – you're talking about – when they say greatest player, this man, when, when Kareem went down with that ankle injury, this man stepped in and played center. 42-15 and 13 assists at center. Triple-double in the sixth hey. game in the NBA Finals. Come on, man. Hey, the man played – 20 years old. 20 years old. Five. 20 years old. He was LeBron before LeBron and even colder. The man was 6'9 and played one through five fluently. He changed the way they play point guard in the NBA. He changed all that. Magic did that. The, them real no look passes, that real spinning, spinning and wheeling, like the headaches that he gave Larry Bird and Jordan. Crazy. It's What's going city, on, Benny homie, Drew? I'm 
Ben, what's happening? Hey, 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 Shalom, Eli. How you doing, my brother? Oh, you're trying to make it, trying to make it. You know how it is. Hey, I'm, I'm going to start off with you, my brother, because I need you to give me five minutes. I need you to go on mute because I got some smoke for Shelton and, <laughs> and um, <laughs> hey, money, with this buffoonery they've been putting out. Because they know I'm like the candy man. You call my name, they know I'm going to show up. So what's all this? What, which one y'all want to start with? Y'all want to start with EJ being Israel? Or y'all want to start with this Tyson Fury buffoonery? Where y'all want to go at now? Let me it don't matter to me because uh, we all know that Spence is done. What I told you about that, that boy, your boy Bud Crawford straight deeper. He ain't fight nobody. You were out here talking about he got the Pacquiao fight. You told me I was tripping. Mr. Sheldon and H Money told me I was tripping, Eli. But now the, the, the Manny Pacquiao fight ain't come to fruition. And then they called me crazy again, Eli, about the Tyson Fury fight and Deontay Wilder. Saying there ain't gonna be no trilogy. Am I crazy again? And they still ain't no. giving my apology. Hold one second. Okay, hold one second. Though. Hold it's one okay. second. Hold one second. It's okay. Hold on. One it's second. Okay. One second. One second. I want to hear no. that, that energy. I apologize. One second. I apologize. One second. I apologize. This man now. And by how, how EJ around here kissing man. Because I ain't seen him kiss another dude yet, bro. I seen him play. Hold on, man. Hold on, Ben. You can't take that on, shit. Ben. And I can get in that shit. Cause I came up Hold on, Ben. Last time Hold on, Ben. Hold on, Ben. The number one pick in the NFL draft, Trevor Lawrence. Jacksonville Jaguars. We knew. Hey, what would we say? <laughs> that, that's it. Oh, no. No. Oh, no. Guess what happened? The Jaguars they trade. traded. They traded Sam Darnold to the Jaguars, and the Jets got Trevor Lawrence. Wow, Ooh. that's be. Oh no, um, I, I got it wrong. My bad. My bad. I got it wrong. The Jets traded Sam Darnold to Carolina. Carolina got Sam Darnold, but Trevor so Lawrence went to Jacksonville. Lawrence? He went to Jacksonville. Jacksonville Jaguars. They kept that pick. They kept that pick. <laughs> They they kept kept that that real <laughs> hey, yeah. Joe, you, your commentating on, on the on the draft sounded like what being Israel was saying you with you and, and Tyson Fury and, and his trilogy. Sound like hey, I know you know right. I know he apologized to the LDBC. I know he apologized to the LDBC. I apologize to Ben. Talking that buffoonery, though. They know I was in traffic and I was coming, though. Oh, jump on you around here camping for Errol Smith. You know, that's what that's my first agenda. I'm, it's man down for life right here. Everybody yeah, know if I they know, see you captain Israel, for the ducker. You captain like, for the ducker. That's fine. Ain't That's no fine. This shit, this shit ain't no captain. <laughs> Your boy over there, Bud Crawford, is crap is capping. He not only capping, he crapping. Cause he's shitting right <laughs> <laughs> He just crap right. Hey, That's uh -oh. what he said. Hey. He don't want to nobody show. He don't want to fight nobody. He you trying to say that WBO instead of just I know he want to fight. He waiting on you. He waiting on you, man. He waiting on you to sign the contract, man. After this football fight, we going to drag Bud Crawford to the ring. And I told Mr. Shelton he going to help us drag him to the ring. Because he will kicking his thing. Hey, kicking and screaming. Hey, Eli. Eli, he waiting on He waiting on Ben. See when you can't that's his next fight. Eli, I heard you when you he waiting on me, and that's his next fight. You telling them to stay telling them, right? They say you right, though. But, but they say it being crazy, though. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about and all this other stuff, though. Keep that same energy. Shout out to Danny the Great, though. He know what's up. He did. He did. He waiting on you, man. You his next fight. for you, Ben, so... Uh, what do you think about uh, where Ben goes? No, he came back. He back. Yo, Ben, yeah. what do you think about Wilder blaming Mark Breland with no evidence? You know, accusing another black man for no reason and firing Wilder. Hey, 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 see, shout out, shout out to my homeboy H Money, aka I'm the brother. Man. I'm the brother. 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 I can't even ask you a question. You sound like a bad man. Man, you sound like a bad man. Back to my question, B. So what do you think about 
Deontay Wilder hiring Malik Scott as his trainer, somebody he had a fixed fight with. Somebody please don't. Wilder didn't even land a punch, knocked out Malik Scott, and that we all knew it was a fixed fight then. Now it's confirmed that it was a fixed fight because now that's his best friend and his trainer. Wilder could have hired any trainer in the world, Derrick James, the trainer of Earl Spence. Instead, he goes to hire Malik Scott, somebody okay. he had a fixed fight with. I don't okay. agree with. But what, what was the fixed fight was him and with, with Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury. Now no, we got the big trilogy. Trilogy. We got So you don't want to talk about the Malik Scott fight. You don't want to talk about Malik Scott and Wilder. Let's talk about that. Keep that so same. you don't want to talk about the, the fixed fight. In front of you. So you don't want to talk trilogy. about the fixed that fight he had with Malik Scott. That crackhead got to do this here now. He hey, bro, what's up, man? Nah, bro, don't do that. DMX died, bro. The DMX was a crackhead, bro. Stop calling people crackheads. DMX I died. Love, I love him. I love DMX. Nah, yeah, yeah, nah the they make fun of crackheads, bro. I got homies who they mothers was crackheads. I got homies. They uncles was crackheads, bro. I don't I don't make fun of we people. All, we, all got, on, we all got I some little that. one that was on crack. That don't keep. That don't got nothing to do with when you get a chance to get on drugs like DMX, bro. When you said. Bro, I'm not going to make fun of DMX when you pass away. So I'm going to call DMX a crackhead. So are you gonna make fun of DMX for being a crackhead next? Or are you gonna do that? Keep the same energy. We talk about the Gypsy <laughs> Queen. You ain't finna no, trick you about Malik Scott. We talking Keep about why we having a fight on Malik Scott. Queen, Don King. So you don't want to talk about Malik Scott. Okay, we got talking about, We talking about the Gypsy Queen who cheated in all his championship fights, bro. Let's talk yeah, about yeah, it. No, no uh, evidence at all. Let's you spiked it. I thought it was Mark Brilliant. I thought it was Mark Brilliant that spiked his water. I thought I thought I thought it was the man that put the little the little crazy pig in his in his in it put the little crazy so pig. Wilder lied. So Wilder lied about Mark Breland. Is that what you're telling me? So Tyson Fury lied about the pig too. Keep that same energy. I'm ready for you, bro. Let's go. Let's <laughs> hey, he go. got you, age hey, buddy. Let's he got go. you. Let's go, Ace. I'm ready for this shit. Let's get to Malik Scott. Back Malik Scott. to that fixed fight. Can we talk, we talk about the fixed fight with Malik Scott real quick? You want you don't want to talk about that? With him and Klitschko. Let's so you don't want to talk about it. Exactly. You, exactly do? but you don't want to talk what about you I'm not to have a fix you fight you in For you too, Mr. Why Shelton. You, 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 you are lie to you. Why lie to you? Why lie to, to, to all of your fans you about Mark Breland? Why did he fire Mark Breland and kept JDs? Answer that question. You want to you want being Israel to answer that question? You you and I told you how I feel about yeah. that. You want me to answer that again? Okay, well, then, you you know, want me to answer that again? So well, well, no, let me rephrase the question. Let me rephrase the question. Let me ask you the question. I got you. And everybody else know. Was Wilder wrong for my father and Mark Breland and accusing him for spiking his water? Was Wilder wrong for that? Yes or no? Or is Wilder just, you treat Wilder like he's God and he doesn't make mistakes? Is that what it is? We human, bro. We all make mistakes. I'm, I'm the first person. I make plenty of mistakes. I'm, 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 I'm begging for a second chance now, bro. So what I'm going to throw at anybody. I'm making mistakes by the time I'm not doing it. Because he's a world-class cheater. Bro, we going to get these cheaters fast. So we getting all these cheaters. So why did Wilder fight him if he was a world-class cheater? Why did Wilder fight against him? Hey, number two. It's not a Number two. I can read your cheater. Jets. Zach Wilson, BYU. I can't believe they took Zach Wilson, bro. They should have took uh, Justin Fields, bro. They be hating on black quarterbacks, dog. This shit is crazy. <laughs> hey, they hating, on, they hating on black boxer, too, right now. Hey, yeah. Hey, Which black bro, bro, Fury cheated, bro. Stop saying he didn't cheat. He whooped his ass, bro. Wilder, Eli, bro. Eli, Eli, Eli. Wilder, hey, Eli. Wilder lied to me. He lied to you. He lied to all of his fans, bro. He lied on Mark Breland. Wilder just couldn't take his loss like, like the a Mark man. Breland one, bro. I don't. I'm not too sure on that one. I did that, that one right there is a four shot on me. I'm not even gonna lie to nobody. But when he did that, he Fury lied on that cheating, man. He bro, did that. We watched Fury cheat, bro. We watched Fury choking this man. We watched Fury do all the dirty shit in the ring. We saw the glove with our own eyes, bro. We saw all the dirty shit. We know that he's a dirty fighter. That happens in boxing. That was up to for me. That was up to Wilder's corner. But I want people to stop saying that he didn't cheat. The motherfucker cheated. But it's still on Wilder's corner to deal with it because that happens in boxing. So who checked the who was in the back? Wilder's corner. The JDS. 
So why is he still on the team? That's what I'm saying. I, I don't know why, bro. I'm not, even gonna make, I'm not making no excuses for Eli, nobody. You're a real nigga, bro. You a real G. I know. Hey, hey, Eli, Eli. Let me clear this up. Let me clear this up for me. H when he tried to take it left with you, bro. I told him a long time ago, last year, when we talked about it. Shout out to Deacon, Deacon 305, because Deacon was on the panel, yeah, too. Right and, and, and all of them told me, um, Eli, you know what I'm saying about the situation. If, if you tell me, Eli, you my dude, right? Just just listen to me out for a minute. You my guy. I'm your mm -hmm. trainer. You tell me, Israel, man, I'm going in here, and, and, and you know I'm ready to die tonight. You feel what I'm saying? I said, nah, man, you tripping, bro. You said, man, look, I'm a boxer, bro. I'm ready to whoop ass or get my ass whooped. You hear what I'm saying, Eli? Mm -hmm. This is what you're telling me. I'm ready to die. Do not throw this towel in. What, mm -hmm. what, what, what shall I do, Eli? I should listen to you. Cause I see you getting your ass whooped. Listen to the box. I wouldn't family. give a fuck what you said. You ready to do? Your family, <laughs> your kids are not gonna look at me when it come down to you getting your ass whooped. And Facts. you need to. I had to throw the towel in, no matter Facts. how much cheating nah, that nah, happened nah, that nah, night. Nah, 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 okay, okay. Respect you for that, right? This Facts. why we now listen to this, Eli. This why we got the the the, the, the all this controversy right now, bro. You mm -hmm. feel what I'm saying? Just think about it. You got me saying, I'm ready to listen to you. If you ready to die, I'm telling you, like, damn, bro, you sure you ready to do this shit? I love boxing. Boxing is a brutal sport by itself. One thing about boxing, Eli, these dudes signed up to die tonight, bro. You yeah. know what I'm saying? When they lace it up, they're ready to die. We ain't losing. Not on my they... watch. Not on you... my watch, you're not. You're not you dying tonight. Be... Shelter. It don't have to be on your watch, what I'm talking about, bro. What I'm saying, this is a brutal sport by itself, yeah. bro. By Listen, that would make it clear. So we got to have this conversation again. If I'm in your corner and I see you losing and there's no chance for you to win, I'm throwing in the towel. I don't give a fuck what you said. Listen, and if you got to fire me, too bad. Hold on, let, me, let, me hear what, let me hear what Ben and Israel are going with this. Go ahead, B. Listen, what I'm trying to do. Punch in everything, bro. It don't take accumulation of punches, bro. It could take one punch, hit you in your nose, send that shit to your brain, and fuck your whole career up forever. You talk about your kids, you ain't finna see your kids. You ain't finna see yourself. See the, see the 10 count. You feel what I'm saying? I'm finna send you to the mm -hmm. true upper room, bro. You feel what I'm saying? And when you it's talk about room. boxing, Eli, when you talk about boxing, how brutal it is on that, on that stand alone, and when you mm -hmm. got these guys that's cheating, these adjectives that people don't want to address. They get these cats free rides. Oh, here, you know, I want to ask you, Eli, and I don't forgive me for moving the goalposts because I'm going to get back mm -hmm. to it. I get, I can hold a conversation. Why? You good. I'm probably Listen to me real quick. You're breaking up. You're breaking up. Get your audio right, bro. You, 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 you say something else? Mike check, Mike check, say something. Yo. Else. Okay, I can hear you. You got me? Yeah, I got you. I'm listening. Now, a lot of people say Tyson Fury is very talented with all the skills he got. I do too. All yeah. the irky jump, the boxing skills, the real cute, all this stuff here. With all that boxing, all that, why is this dog out of over this man? And everybody that loves boxing. A lot of people cheating in boxing since get your audio right, bro. Well, only go the ahead. Thing over go ahead. Is, I'm ready. The thing of it is, is part of his skill set is his ability to cheat and use all the veteran tactics to turn you away from the referee and, 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 and give you that, give you that kidney shot to wait, to use his weight, to lay on, to lay on you and, 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 and wear your legs down to be able to, to, to grab you and grapple you and put his, put a glove over your nose and cut your exactly. hair off some, you know, to put a little exactly. elbow on you and exactly. turn away. That That's what it is. Exactly. But that's so, when you bring so, a corner, so. that's an experienced corner. They got to tell the referee all of that shit in the locker room that they know because they've been watching film. And then when it's going on in the fight, that's the only point where I see where, where, where Wilder should have been mad at his whole corner. That shit was going on during the whole fight. He got to stay focused on the fight. When he came to the hold corner, on. they should have been mad him. Give him a shot. Said, and he should have been mad. He should have been mad at what, Eli, you just said? The his whole, whole corner. corner. 
You know what I told them people? I would have fired fuck Mark Breeder. I told them motherfucker, I would have fired everybody, bro. Especially <laughs> Diaz. Diaz. JD would have left with an ass whooping, bro. Because if, if it was all controversial by the club and you was in the locker room when I was over there with Fred and, and, and Sugar Hill was talking about what well, D, 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 G was in the locker room while, while, while wrapping up the gloves and all this. I'm looking at, I'm like, what? You know, it had me thinking crazy. But I'm not saying Tyson Fury did cheat. It's still controversial. If you take Deontay Wilder off the table. If you take Deontay Wilder hey, off the I'm table. Saying, you lost like a man. You still have been over a year. You know what it has been over a year? Let me talk, bro. Can I talk, bro? It's been over a year. You still haven't provided any evidence. You falsely accused Mark Greenland and kept JDs, which I thought was some whole shit. You know what I mean? I thought that was some whole ass shit. You feel me? Yeah, I got a phone call. Damn, I'll be right back. But hey, real shit. I would have fired the whole corner. I don't blame him for saying that the man cheated. The man did cheat. At the end of the day, you got to get over it and you got to learn how to get past the cheating. When 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 Mayweather did that shit to Madonna, Madonna bit him on his goddamn hand. When 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 uh. Sean Porter was putting his forehead all on, on on Spence. Spence put them gloves on his belt line. You, it, motherfuckers go through that shit all the time. I think the only thing that the big thing of it is, I, I want people to stop telling this man that the dude wasn't cheating in the fight when we all saw him cheating. Beyond that right there, he got to fight through it when it happened. You know, he don't fuck through it. It's over. That fight is over. My just that you know, when you when you when you when you take the situation, if you're a run back, a, a shot at the title, and only mm -hmm. thing give my run back. If you whoop my ass, okay, give me my run back. It. It's all this controversy about he don't want to fight Deontay Wilder. Yeah, blah blah blah. I'm going undisputed. I'm telling these dudes long time ago that ain't gonna be no undisputed because Deontay Wilder deserve a run back. It's yeah, Eli. What you say, bro? Yeah. He deserved that. I got. I gave you that. I could have ran with my belt. I had a draw, and it was, and, and I'm the champion. And if I felt like I couldn't beat you, that's why I did all that. Wilder, Wilder ain't got enough. If the man felt like he couldn't win, he wouldn't have ran it back in the first place. <clears throat> if the man felt like he wouldn't win, he wouldn't be sitting here going through all this litigation in court and, and, and all that for nothing, trying to hold up a fight if he's trying to get away. I, I'm going to be pulling for Deontay Wilder, but I'm not the whole. It's not a conspiracy to me. It's easy. Hey, the, the motherfucker cheated. He good at it. And at the end of the day, Wilder corner got to gotta be sharp. Now, come on, y'all make this motherfucking fight and stop all this bullshit. I've been cheated before, so I know how it is. You know, it is it, 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 it is what it is. What's going on, D. Jones? What's up with y'all, brothers? Salute to y'all. Salute to H. Money. To the tab out, Kane, Ben Israel, uh, Eli said, Everybody left today. Slip to you, Eli. Well, oh, shit, not, not too much, man. I'm chilling on it, bro. What you got going? No, no, I heard y'all. Uh, um, I mean, the conversation changed. I mean, went from uh, Dion, I think y'all talking about the most athletic athletes, yeah. most talented, and then uh, we got the uh, wild of Fury. Yeah, we've been bouncing. We've been bouncing around. We've been bouncing around. Yeah, Ben, yeah. ben wasn't wrong though. You know, he said what was uh, as far as um, as far as uh, uh Wild and Ferry, he said that was going to come. Yeah, you know, he was wrong. He was, I, 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 I agree with being on. Shit, I didn't. I didn't hear nothing wrong that he said. Really, I didn't hear nothing wrong that he said. I know H Money lobbying for the skill fighter. The the more skill fighter is Fury, as far yeah. as just naturally skilled and H money lobbying for that. But outside of lobbying for that, the truth of it is, is all of that shit did happen. That being said that, that everybody been saying it did happen. So, you know, we know how it is. Yeah. You know, hopefully the fights will happen. You know, I'm just tired of, uh, you know, not getting these fights, you know, it's starting to become boring. Danny, the great Spence beat your favorite fighter, didn't he? <laughs> and he be tripping. He be tripping, tripping. <laughs> hey, yeah, Iverson was a very good athlete too. He was a very good athlete. 
he, he was, yeah, he was, he was athletic, but he wasn't on no Magic Johnson, uh, Deion Sanders level. As far as athletic, oh, Bo Jackson and uh, and um, Deion Sanders, Deion Sanders, and then they were they were like freaks and figure mentions. You, 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 you do know that Iverson was a a a, 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 a football college recruit quarterback, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, I, I mean, because LeBron he could play football, but I don't think they on yeah. that same level as Deion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, were, I, I, I'm, you know what? I'm not even gonna be that person to just throw that out there and use that because it's one thing to say that you from high school to college you could have played. It's another thing to be a pro and play both sports and jump off a plane of a baseball game and then go play a Monday night football game or to be your leg get your leg get broken and shattered after you don't uh, uh abused everybody on the football field and then you go and transition over to baseball and and light it up just as good. It's a big it's a big difference. Yeah Dion he Dion Sanders at uh he has something that a lot of managers couldn't do, you know, and that's just that's just God given to him. State champion, five star recruit, football, yeah. Yeah, Danny, Danny be tripping, y'all. He ain't controlling his emotions right now. Everybody, go up. Come on. Hey, it's money up. Yeah, you you little you be bugging out, yo. I'm just gonna wait for H. So now it's happening here. You know, I don't know which fight's coming on tonight. Come on, yeah. <laughs> Each guy come back. I don't know what he said. Up. You got people backstage, H. Yeah, the brother Eli. They go Ben with Shelton that they fell off. You hear me? Y'all hear me? Yo. Yeah, everybody else backstage, I think. Now they come back, come back, y'all. My bad. I had fell off for a second. I was eating. Yeah, um, I was just uh, cooking down in the grave in a few seconds. Hey, uh, so I see that um, the 49ers drafted Trey Lance with the number three pick. So a lot of people thought Mac Jones was going to. He was going to get drafted number three, so Trey Trey Lance goes up to number three. So Atlanta Falcons on the clock. I might as well switch this one to the NFL drive stream because man, this is fire right here. So anybody, it looked like I'm anybody sorry. draft a quarterback. Anybody draft a quarterback from um, Ohio? Yeah, drafted Ohio. the number one pick was the Jaguars. They got Trevor Lawrence, the quarterback from Clemson, with the number one pick. Number two pick, the Jets got uh, what they get? They get uh, uh Wilson. They got Wilson from BYU, who's a quarterback. Number three, the 49ers draft Trey Lance from North Dakota State, which is a quarterback now. Number four, Atlanta Falcons. They might get a quarterback. So it might be four quarterbacks drafted in a row. All quarterback first four picks. And nobody so, got Fields. Your Fields ain't get drafted yet. That's who I want to know. Man, whoever top three. He was top three. What you think about Fields? Fields, uh, I bet they went on a... Uh... What's it called? A smear? A smear? I can't think of exact words. He's supposed to have been top three. Yeah. Well, well, Trey Lance was number three. He black, so can't say that. I think he's better than Fields. I, I think that's a, that's a cop out. That's a cop out. 
I want to play for the field. Then they get Kyle Pitts, the tight end from uh, Florida. Yo, this tight end is the truth. This was a good pick for the Atlanta Falcons. This means the Atlanta Falcons, they're not giving up on Matt Ryan. He ran a 4-4. Tight end ran a 4-4, bro. So he fast as hell. Nice pickup for the Falcons right here. Nice pickup, Atlanta Falcons. I like this pick. I think they already have some good tight ends already, but this, this tight end right here should take them to the next level. Great pickup by the Atlanta Falcons right here. What do you think about this draft pick, Sheldon Moore? I can't hear you telling you on mute. I can't hear you, Sheldon. I think you probably got a phone call. You might have a phone call, but we can't hear you right now. Ben, you there, Ben? What's good? What's good? You know, I'm 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 loving Fields though, but you know, I'm kind of hoping he drop drop late because you know I'm looking at Baltimore. You feel what I'm saying? Can you hear me, uh, H? Yeah, we hear you now. Who you with, Ben? Who's your team? I'm I'm with the Ravens. The Ravens. Who, who you with? He with the Ravens. He with the Ravens. I just told you. Are you with the Ravens? Oh, because I know you from Miami. I thought you was rocking with them Dolphins. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah Ravens. Fans, you, you already know I was born there. It's Bmo all day, DC. Oh, I yeah, know. Uh, this is a great pickup uh, for Atlanta because you know Matt Ryan was best when he had Algie Crumpler, when he had Tony Gonzalez, when he had a big, strong, <laughs> physical tight end that could catch passes. So this is great for Atlanta right here. I you know his football. What you know about Algie Crumpler back in the day with Michael Vick, bruh? Come on, man. I this is I told you I've been watching the Raiders since 1970, since the days of Daryl LaMonica and Amar Hubbard. Big Ben Davidson. I've been watching football. I played football my whole high school, even in junior college, and I got to service. So football is my sport, but boxing is my love. You know what I'm talking about? My football, man. Hello? My bad. You hear me? Y'all yeah. hear me? Yeah, I got you now. I got you now. Yeah. So. Ain't nothing like football, man. Watching some hard yeah. hit. Football is a gladiator sport. Contact sport. Yeah. yeah, I love football. That's my sport. But boxing is my love. I love boxing. Just one man, one man, one man against one man, and nobody to blame. Yes. Yeah, that was an excellent pick, bro. I'm waiting to see who we pick up. I can't wait to see who my Raiders pick up. Can you hear me, D. Jones? Yeah, y'all yeah, was in the store. I'm surprised. No, uh, I'm saying you can hear me. I couldn't hear nobody else. Oh, no, I was I, I was on mute. I was in the store. Yeah, okay. okay. Promotion. Yeah. H money is in and out. I don't know what he's doing. Nobody picked up fields yet. No, not yet. Uh the uh 49ers were supposed to pick him up, but they picked up the boy out of North North Dakota State, Trey Lance. What you think about Trevor Lawrence? I think he's gonna be okay. He's gonna have a rough first year though. The Jacksonville ain't got shit down there. It's gonna be ugly. <laughs> it's gonna be ugly. <laughs> you know, if, if you go when you go number one, you get a lot of money, but that usually means you go to a bad football team. That's why they drafted number one. Yeah, I, I knew uh, at one point Alabama they had a couple of good quarterbacks back in the day coming to the league. You know, I think I remember Colt McCoy when he came from Texas. He he could have been good. You know, it just it, it never went to uh, a, themselves. Right, he went to a bad team. It's yeah. hard to get drafted high. That means you're going to a bad team. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's no way around that. You know what I'm saying? When you drafted high, it's better like Lamar Jackson. He fell into the perfect situation because he happened to go to a good team that needed a quarterback. Yeah. I'm, I'm not a uh, Lamar Jackson fan. I, you know, I, 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 I think he's okay. I think um, he, he, he just has a lot to work on. As a quarterback, you know, 
I like, I like uh, uh, such as what D. Jones might like, get some receivers. Uh, same, same. The Bills quarterback, I think he got a good up to uh, keep the ball well. But you, know, he, this, but you know, his first couple of years, they said he was a bust. Oh, uh, which one? The boy in Buffalo. Yeah, that's what it, everybody said. That's for me. I was saying, I said, yep. this is between, uh, I think the difference is because, uh, everybody was trying to compare him to, um, Jim Kelly. Jim Kelly. And then his, his uh, peers coming out of the draft, uh, yeah, Lamar and stuff. You know, Lamar just had yeah. Lamar has legs. Lamar's legs yeah. are, uh, are damn near unheard of. You know, I just yeah. think his, his his quarterback IQ is is, is, is just damn near. Unheard. Yeah, he got to learn. He got to learn not to make so many mistakes, and he got to learn to stop running. Every time you don't have to run every play. I think he, in my personal opinion, I think they should use him as a uh, um, what's it called? A wing more so, like a wing, or that you know, just to spread out off it. He's fast, you know, and every time yeah. he, he gets uh, his play comes from yes. when he's in his feet. It's not really like he's yeah, the most dynamic passer, you know. I think right trying to use him as a wide out in a sense would be the, the wisest as how they tried to um switch uh that quarterback to a wide receiver. They did it before, they did it before, it's happened before. Well, Don't you see, Joe Montana. Joe Montana said it best, bro. He said, until these young quarterbacks learn how to step up and stand in the pocket with chaos going on all around them and still be able to make a throw, they're not going to be able to win. He said, that's why Tom Brady's killing them all. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I think Tom Brady's probably like the, uh, the epitome of uh, the draft don't mean squat. Facts don't mean nothing. Because he's a six-round draft pick. <laughs> Do y'all think Tom Brady is the GOAT? No. 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 Because he plays in an era where he can't be hit. A lot of people think he's the GOAT. If you put Tom Brady in the 70s and the 80s, He's probably out of the league by now, and he's not that good because the quarterbacks used to be able to be killed. Now you can't touch him. Yeah, I, I don't go based off other people's opinions with Tom Brady. I was, it's too many uh, cheating scandals around that man. For me to ever say go in the same conversation. You can't cheat Best and win in different laws yeah. and different <laughs> orders come in during your time of your championships. You know, like, no, that's not how sports work, you know. Anybody that changes that is not, is not a real fan of sports. You can't cheat and win and then say you're great. You know, the best right quarterback right I've ever seen, the best quarterback I've ever seen in my lifetime is Joe Montana. I ain't seen nobody better than Joe. Ain't Crazy. nobody coming better. <laughs> ain't nobody before better. Joe Montana is the best quarterback I've ever seen. Yeah. Yeah. Different areas. I think I think yeah he should have great he came in a different era and it's just was it the tuck rule and all this other stuff it's you know I, I just I'm not a fan of that you know and I and I know why I think NFL went to a different uh a different uh audience it's soft now the NFL is soft as fuck yeah <laughs> it's soft now Ronnie Ronnie no uh, Tom Brady won a Super Bowl last year either, but uh yeah <laughs> that's Ronnie. my experience. That's like with my yeah. you know, uh, players like uh, players like Ronnie Lott yeah. and uh, Ronnie Lott, Donnie Shell, uh, uh, Mel Blunt, and players they couldn't play. Uh, Jack Tatum they couldn't play in the league today. They'd be in jail or they'd be fined out their ass. <laughs> and that's and that and that goes for um the, uh, the NBA as well. That's how I look my outlook on the NBA as well. The NBA is 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 soft. It's, it's way too soft. soft. It, it's way too soft. <laughs> Charles Oakley be in jail today. Yeah, yeah. yeah Vernon, Vernon Maxwell, motherfucking uh, uh, <laughs> Vernon Maxwell. They had back then. Vernon Maxwell, Charles Oakley, Charles Barkley, Charles. all them dudes would be in jail. 
Hey, I remember Vernon Maxwell actually punched a fan in the face, broke their jaw at a game. Vernon Maxwell, Mad Max. Dang it. So we got a surprise in a draft. The uh, Bengals take Jamar Chase, wide receiver, with the number five pick. So that's a surprise right there. He moves up in the draft. You know, actually, not really, because who's the quarterback in Cincinnati? Oh, yeah, the, the, yeah, Joe, the wire, Joe the Burrow, right? Joe LSU. Burrow. Yeah. Who was his favorite receiver when he was at LSU? Jamar Joe Chase. Boy. That's fact. <laughs> That's boss. The Bengals were good at one point. They just yeah, couldn't uh, they were. Joe Burrow, though. Yep. There's a flat. The Dolphins got up. the next pick. Next pick, the pick is in. For the Dolphins, for the Miami Dolphins. The Dolphins pick who? We finna see. The pick is in. They still talk about Jamar Chase, how big he is. They comparing him to A.J. Brown in Tennessee. Yeah, AJ Brown is a motherfucker. 6'4, 225. Bastard. What happened to AJ Brown? Injuries? No, AJ Brown's still there. He just got he had a good year last year. He got hurt in the playoffs, but he had a great year last year. He'll be back. He's going to, Tennessee got a good squad. They just gotta get some uh quarterback help, I think. Yeah. I think Derrick Henry, uh, he after me last year. Yeah, yeah Derrick Henry ran for 2,000 yards. That motherfucker's a monster. But they got to stop running him so much. They're going to kill him, man. He <laughs> gassed out last year or something. Yeah. Play, play, uh, I was watching one of his games. It looked terrible. Yeah. But, that wasn't, you know, he didn't, he didn't get the shoulder down. It was, it was a lot of things. He was, he was hurt by that time. He was already hurt by the playoffs. Oh, yeah. You could see it. You could see it that he was hurt. He wasn't himself. Jamar Chase. Okay, brother. Let's see what you do. Since you're going down there with your homeboy, Sam, uh, Joe Burrow. What's the JD Vlogger? You great to get cooked, man. Don't you ever say nothing like that again? What's that? Steph Curry, the best point guard of all time. Let me see that. Who said that? JD JD Blanca. JD, you can get blocked for blasphemy, bro. That's you can get blocked and delete it for blasphemy, bro. That's the most disrespectful thing I've ever heard in my life. I think he's a great shooter, you know, three point shot. Yeah. That's amazing three point shot. Yeah. yeah, he's the best shooter I've ever seen, but best point guard, come on, JD Blanca. You, you haven't watched basketball that long. That's just my opinion. I think Clay, Clay, no, Tom, I, Clay Thompson. I think without Clay, there's no stuff Curry. Exactly. Clay played a lot of that defensive load. And Draymond Green, I'm not a fan of Draymond. Draymond, I think he one of the best defensive players ever. Yeah, Draymond is smoking dope. <laughs> <laughs> and Booker Sugar. Yeah, Draymond smoking that good shit. Saying he one of the best defensive players of all time, nigga. If you don't cut it out. <laughs> Jalen Waddle, Alabama, number six pick for the Miami Dolphins, wide receiver. Who? Jalen Waddle from Alabama, wide receiver, number six pick. Nobody took defense. Huh? Nobody drafted anyone defensively yet. No, they ain't got no defense yet. It's been three quarterbacks. It's been a, a tight end and two receivers so far. That's why a lot of them teams suck. They don't have any defense. Exactly. 
drafting quarterbacks. I do the same thing every year. I draft a quarterback and never bought down and draft corners, linebackers. Team just be trash. I'm finna go on mute for a second, uh, D, uh, D. Jones. I gotta go do something. I'll be right back. I'm surprised they didn't draft Devontae Smith. He was the Heisman Trophy winner right there. He's exactly. The exactly. I'm finna go on mute for one second. I gotta do something. I'll be right back. They should have drafted Devontae Smith right there. The Dolphins tripping, but Waddle is good too. But Smith was the Heisman Trophy winner, bro. So Smith is still available. I think the Lions going to end up taking Smith. And it's crazy how every pick so far. Yeah, Anna, Anna, the NFL draft is on right now. It's on. It's just crazy, though. You know, um, it's, it's all offense being picked right now. Every p- a player drafted is an offensive player. Quarterback, wide receivers, tight end. So, you know, the NFL has changed, man. It's all about offense. They used to say defense win championships. The way they move them, it looked like they focus on the offense. My boy JD says uh, Steph Curry is the best point guard of all time. He's the best shooting point guard of all time. He's the best shooter. So Jalen Waddle to the uh, Miami Dolphins. Dolphins get the wide receiver. I thought Devontae uh, Smith should have been the pick, but hey, Waddle, same college. It looks like um, Smith just hugged Waddle. They both played, uh, you know, at Alabama, both wide receivers for the same team. It looks like Waddle is in the top 10. So he moves up on the draft board. I don't think Waddle be getting drafted this high. I know he's a good player, but he got drafted high, bro. Real high. Hit the like button, y'all. We doing the NFL draft. Shout out to the brother DJ, Shelton Moore. You dig? Okay, 24 Geezy said, Kyle Pitts, my dog. Yeah, Kyle Pitts, the truth. He the truth. NFL comparison, they, they compare Waddell to Tyreek Hill. Oh, that's a fire comparison. Tyreek Hill for the uh, Kansas City Chiefs. Man, they call him the cheetah. Tyreek Hill, one of the fastest players in the NFL for sure. Oh, God. Mm-hmm. Hit the like button in the NFL draft. H Money, Mr. Supreme, Mr. The Zone. Be in the building. I'll be right back, y'all. I'll be right back, DJ. Take over. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Everybody watching draft. I know uh especially Thursday, everybody got something different going on. I got a question. Y'all think uh, where you're drafted matters? I saw on a uh, recent podcast, they said uh, wherever you get drafted, no matter top to bottom, it doesn't, you know, define you as an athlete. What's y'all opinion on that? Jack don't want to sleep.
What's good? What's good? What he do? What he do? Yeah, we watching the NFL draft right here, man. Hit the like button, and subscribe to the channel. We'll probably go go back to the PFL, man. See what's up with the PFL. NFL draft going down. H money, Mr. Supreme. We in the building. Everybody hit the like button right now. Taking it to the next level, you dig? Smack the fucking like button. Hit the like button, though. Hit the like button. So we probably get back to the commentary of the PFL. Let's see. Since the brothers fell off for a sec. Get this shit going. Chat dry, eh? What'd you say, I? Where the chat go at? <laughs> yeah, it got kind of dry. Probably got to get into the commentary of uh, uh, the PFL. So, so the Lions up next. The Lions look like they're ready to make a pick. Who they going to draft? Well, look like dude got a phone call. Now, that's crazy. That dude Waddell went high in the draft like that, though. I'm surprised that dude went high like that. Mm -hmm. PFL. Who fighting tonight? Uh, Rory McDonald. You know, McDonald used to be in the UFC. Uh, yeah. George St. Pierre, a uh, partner. So he's fighting tonight. Rory McDonald. Oh, I'll be right back. I'll give me one sec. Be right back. I needed that. I need you something. Y'all not hype for the fights? This
What's good, where brother DJ go? He must have fell off. We right back. We probably get tap out King and this motherfucker with us. Get tap out King to do the commentary for the fights. And we in there. Subscribe, hit the like button, ladies and gentlemen. Let me get my boy tap out back up in here with us. Feel me? Tap out King with the best commentary. Back to the one and only Tap out King. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, no. Chris Camozzi. Huh? When? Right now. You got it, the blunt money? Huh? You got the money for the blunt, right? Uh. And now, Chris Camozzi looking to turn it up here. And they continue to throw hands. Wow, what a great fight between Chris Camozzi here and Ilimaniano Ili 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 Sordi. Wow, what a great fight. Ilimaniano Sordi. I mean, throwing everything but the kitchen sink here. And now Sordi lands on top. Chris Camozzi's in trouble here. Wow. Emiliano Sordi taking the back of Chris Camozzi, landing some good ground and pound shots here. Referee stepping in, taking a closer look. Can Emiliano Sordi pick up a rear naked choke here? He's not really known for his submission game, mostly known for his great stand-up and striking ability. But here is a rear naked choke. Can Emiliano Sordi take out Chris Camozzi here early in the first round? He got the choke in tight. Chris Camozzi doing a great job of staying composed and calm in a dangerous position. What an awesome job. And a great heart showcase by Chris Camozzi. Um, this is a great performance for Emiliano Sordi. You know, getting back to getting wins here in the PFL. We seen what he did last season. Um, he had a great season. And he's picking up from where he left off. Um Chris Camozzi has no business of being in this fight, I feel like. You know, um, and Emiliano is just riding the back here of Chris Camozzi. Um, you know, get doing a great job of landing back in the mount late in the round. What a great job here to start off the main card. Emiliano Sorti. Um straight out of Argentina, you know, on a big win streak as well. Um, you know, some people say he looked like he maybe be Brazilian, but we know he's Argentinian, you know, and uh, he's doing a great job. I mean, Chris Camozzi, I feel like he has no business being in the octagon right now with Emiliano Sordi. I really don't think, you know, he belongs in there. He doesn't look in best shape. Um, and so far, it's been all Sordi here.
And we are here, round number two, in a great light heavyweight bout between Chris Camozzi and Emiliano Sorti out of Argentina. What a great main card fight. They're kicking off the main card on the right way. Um, Emiliano Sorti dominated round one. And um, let's see if he could keep it up here in round two. Chris Camozzi, you know, you have to respect the heart from Chris Camozzi. He was in a bad position, and he survived. Um, and now we're back on our feet here in round two. Good uppercut from Chris Camozzi. This is what you call a nice little brawl here. Kind of resembles the Forrest Griffin, Stephen Bonner first fight. You know, uh, this is a good fight. You know, in the PFL, I feel like these guys actually deliver. You know, you don't really see too many exciting fights in the PFL. You know, um, these guys are swinging for the fences. And Chris Camozzi turning it up here in round two, being the aggressor. Um, you know, he doesn't look he doesn't look in great shape. I can tell you that much though. Chris Camozzi looked to be gassed a little bit here, I feel like. But continues to push forward and land great leg kicks. Um I feel like Sorty looks like the fresher fighter. Um, I feel like he came in a fight more condition. Chris Camozzi gets a drop. Wow. And now Chris Camozzi in a side control. Back in a half guard. What a turn of events. Chris Camozzi. You know, a veteran of the sport, a man we've seen fight in the UFC. He's been at the top, you know, and now he's in the PFL with a record of 25 and 14. You know, the man is experienced. He's fought all over the world, and this is just a crazy match right here, man. Sorty looking to recover here. Chris Camozzi doing a great job here in round two. And now this fight is anyone's fight here going into round three. You have to ask yourself, who wants it more? Who's going to dig deeper in the third round and pick up this win? You know, you can't always leave it in the hand of the judges. You know, just like in boxing, just like, you know, in any other sport that has judges involved, you know, you can get robbed. So you don't want to leave it in the hand of the judges here. And now Chris Camozzi looking to bring the fight back down to the ground. Great job from Sorty getting the fight back to his feet and taking down Camozzi himself here in round two. And now Chris Camozzi in a position he doesn't want to be here. And now you have to credit Emiliano Sorty, his heart, eating the big shot. You know, um, being on bottom, eating a lot of ground and pound, and still managing to kick up and get back to his feet and land a takedown of his own is just showing that this man has a lot of heart. Both fighters have great heart. And um, this is a, one of the best fights I've seen in PFL. Um, I feel like, you know, so far in this season, Oh, wow. Chris Camozzi landing some big uppercuts. This is a brawl here. You can hear how the fans are appreciating both fighters showing tremendous heart. I mean, one minute Chris Camozzi's down, one minute Sorty's down. I mean, this is just a crazy fight. Oh, wow. Sorty. Of... 
Sorty looks to be gassed out, man. I don't know. Chris Camozzi may be the fresher fighter. And now we're headed to round number three in the PFL. That was a great second round, bro. That was a great second round. Camozzi turned it around. He, yes, he sir. controlled the round for the most part. Uh, he got Sorty on his back. Sorty's flipped it, and Sorty went back down. It looks like Kamozi got a little bit more gas in the tank than Sorty does. Yeah, man. Uh, I thought that uh, Sorty was the fresher fighter, man. It looked like he going in around two, but, you know, I guess Chris Kamozi is the fresher guy. I mean, so far, just a good fight, man. Headed to this excellent round. scrap. I feel like it's excellent good scrap. Fight. I feel like someone needs to dig deep here in this third round if they really want this win. It, I feel like it's a round of peace. Yeah, it's tied up right now. Here we are in round three. Randy Couture has it one round a piece as well. We know these fighters need to dig deep if they want their hands raised here. Comes down to this last round. Nice right by Sorty here, Lance. Drop Chris Camozzi early in round three. Wow, this fight's been back and forth, man. What a what a performance for both men. Sorty looking to uh, get an arm triangle choke here. He's in a good position to get the choke here and, and have guard. We've seen him almost pick up a rear naked choke in the first round. And now, Kamozi's in trouble here. You got Sorty in mount, and this is a bad position to be in. He's landing some big shots here in Mount. Chris Camozzi. Yeah, he he's Camozzi not that has heart though. Camozzi yeah. has heart. He does. He's landing some big ground and pound. And a Chris Camozzi doing a good job of recovering here, it looks like. You know, he got dropped early. He's looking to finally get himself back together here. They fighting it out on the ground. Camozzi's defending himself. He's defending himself. He's still in the fight. What a fight. Yeah, they scrapping it out. Yeah, no. They're still battling on the ground, guys. They're still battling on the ground. So he's trying to pin him against the cage. Yeah, this round seems like, you know, it's all sorty here, man. Yeah. So far. And this is the at this point is where I believe they should have a rule of mixed martial arts 
where the ref has to step in when they just got a two guys stuck on the cage. Yeah, when they're not being, you know, really active, they should. Yeah. You know. A lot of times they do. If they're not really doing anything, they will break them up and stand them up. This is an excellent fight, Tap Out. This is an excellent fight. Great way to start the card off, guys. Definitely. Uh I mean, for a fight in the PFL, these guys, they delivered for sure. Yeah, he, he landed another takedown. This could be yeah. easily a 10 8 round. I mean, it could be. But Kamozi's but been fighting from the bottom, though. He's been fighting, he hasn't been just laying there. Yeah, he came yeah. he, he back to his feet. And now Sorty's back in mount. That's a bad position right now for Chris Kamozi. Ten seconds left on the clock. Looks like we're headed to a decision. A great fight from both men. Chris Kamozi, Emiliano Sorty. Great performance from both fighters. I feel like this easily takes fight of the night so far. Um, best fight on PFL this entire season so far, you know, even though we're on PFL 2, it's delivered, and um, I'm giving this one the best fight of the PFL so far this season, man. Of this Who you got in this season. fight? Who you got in this fight, Tap Out? Who you got? You know, if I was a judge, I got to give it to Emiliano Sorti here. Uh, he took round one, round two, Chris Camozzi took, and round three, was uh, all sort of, um, he got the big knockdown on the feet. And then, uh, you know, he got on top and controlled, you know, pretty much the entire round. So I got to go sorty. Yeah, me too. I agree. I concur, brother. I concur. He needed the third round and he, and he stepped up, you know. Uh, they they both needed that third round, but it seems like sorty wanted it a little bit more. And uh Roger that. Yep. I completely up. agree with you, brother. I completely agree. But it was a great fight, though. Komozi doesn't have nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah, it was a great fight. Um, you know, Komozi showed off, like you said, a lot of heart, man. Uh, you know, he could have been out. He could have gave up in that third round. But, you know, he stood in there like a true warrior. And now we'll be awaiting the judges' scorecards. Um, but Chris Camozzi, you know, like you say, he shouldn't be ashamed, you know, if he's coming up on short on this fight. He showcased a lot of heart. I'm pretty sure he'll be back in the PFL. Mm -hmm. And now we are waiting – the judges, you know, scorecard here and um, exactly be there very shortly. <laughs> you know, they got Randy Couture and Kenny Florian commentating, two veterans of the UFC. Uh, I think the PS two Hall of Famers, good job. Yeah, yeah, two Hall of Famers. So they're doing a hey, good job. Roger that. that. And they've been busy picking up new fighters. Anthony Pettis was one of them. He came up short. How do you feel about Anthony Pettis' performance uh, last week, you know, coming up short against Clay Collard? I think he needs to retire, bro. He was completely I, dominated in that fight. He just doesn't look like the old Showtime. You know, he's, he's yeah. not, you know, championship caliber like he was back in the day. Uh Exactly. You know, I thought he would do well in the PFL, you know. Yeah, I thought he was going to win the fight. I was expecting him to win. But he was a big uh, favorite. Yeah, he got destroyed. Really, honestly, he got destroyed. Yeah, you're right. Um his days are numbered, man. Um, but still, I mean 
when you're fighting guys like Kate Clay Clollard in the PFL, you should at least perform a little bit better than that, man. You know, right? You should be at least be competitive. He wasn't even competitive. He got dominated in that fight by possibly a B level fighter at his best. That's just being generous. Clay Collard, you know, he he spent time in the UFC, but he couldn't he couldn't make the cut either, you know. Right, right, right. You know, you know that, that's the one thing you can't say about Dana White. He gives you two or three chances after three. If you ain't showed nothing, you're out of there. <laughs> yeah. Three fight you lose three in a row, you pretty much, you know, pack up. <laughs> Go get that really, and come back. If you ain't a veteran or somebody yeah. he has built a relationship with, uh, he right. ain't going to give you that many chances. I mean, let's be honest. He gave Tyron Woodley five chances. Yeah, you know, former champ. Uh, Woodley defended the belt multiple times. He, you know, those kind of guys, they earn that, you know, those mm-hmm. chances. You know, Woodley... You know, a lot of people know who he is. He's been on TMZ, um, so he got a he got a nice fan base. I think Tyron Woodley. I'll be back in a minute. All right. Stop and talking now about we'll that. Begin, all right. We'll yeah. Begin so ready now, for the, who we got five, next? Um, um, we're going in. To Glacin Tebow. Glacin Tebow was a dude that fought in the U- UFC before as well. Veteran mm-hmm. of the sport. Um, Zephyrino and Glacin Tebow. It's a pretty tough fight, man. Glacin Tebow. Yeah, he's been around the game. Yeah, I got to yeah, go with Zephyrino. Zephyrino. Yeah, yeah, he's been I in the UFC got... also. Yeah, they both fought in the UFC been... before. Yeah, Grayson Tebow. He's been, he was in the UFC a long time ago, man. He got a lot of fights mm-hmm. in the UFC too. Exactly. He's, he's thirty-seven years old. And uh, Zeferino's thirty-five. So mm-hmm. these guys. Pretty much evenly matched, you know. Both of them have a good uh, jiu-jitsu background as well. So, two Brazilians are gonna battle it out here. You told me that already. Okay. Glacian Tebow, thirty-four and fourteen. On a two white two fight win streak here. Get back in the house. So T Bow is no stranger to the sport of MMA, a true veteran. And um you know that's a good, a good pick from the PFL picking up a solid veteran like that to their roster. I feel like Glacian Tebow is a very strong grappler, um, brings a lot of power. Trading out of Coconut Creek, Florida. Um, is that so American this top be a good team? Fight. Is he training an American top team? Um, yes, sir. American mm-hmm. top team. So he's coming out of a great camp. If I'm not sure, this may be Lacey Tebow's debut in the PFL. You gonna have to call it, tap out. I gotta run to the bank right quick, but I'm gonna stay on the line because I want to hear what's going on. 
All right. So, Gleason T. Bow, Zephyrino coming up very shortly. Just got to wait here until the fight starts. So, um, you know, Zephyrino, I feel like he's been a little bit more active. Um, we know what he offered in the PF. Fell, you know, he's dominated the PF. Fell just alone, he's grappling. It's something that sticks out to me. Um, you know, training. Audio, bro. It's your audio. Audio. All right. You back? Tap out, you back? I guess not.
And here we are. Round number one. I think I ain't answered. Oh. I don't know. That's part of the game. Glayson Tebow, a veteran of the UFC. And now in the PFL. Why did why did Glayson Tebow take steroids? Um, you know, that to be a million dollar question for him to answer. You know, every fighter has been caught in the past taking bad so like right now right in this fight he's on stick. how do you know who glace and t-bow yeah he looking more like glover to share almost Peter keeps catching him with a left hook. Zeferino, yeah, he is. Um, I thought I was the only one noticing that short left hook that's landing. I feel like Glayson Tebow, you know, he's had his time in the uh, UFC. You know, um, he's 37 years old. You know, he's up there in age. I feel like his best days are, has already come. Um, I feel like Zeferino is just going to be a tad bit better everywhere. If it's on the feet, if it's on the ground, the only thing I feel like Glayson Tebow brings to the table here is just being physically more stronger and having um, a little bit more power in his strikes. But besides that, Zeferino is just an overall better fighter. Um You know, Ray Cooper, the third on the co-main event. What great striking he possessed. And a lot of dynamite in those hands. Great spinning back fist from uh, Zeferino here. So far, very close round. But I feel like Zeferino is being more active. Uh, I have to score this round 10-9. I'm giving it for Zeferino here. Uh He's done a phenomenal job of picking his shots, being more accurate, and, um, you know, having Glayson Tebow swinging for the fences here with shots that are very telegraphed where, you know, you can see those punches wilding up from a mile away here. Um, Glayson Tebow, like I said, a great veteran of the sport, but he's 37 years old now. I feel like he maybe needs to hang him up. Rob 87, one of the best in the game. PFL, PFL, PFL. Great night of fights, man. Uh, I mean, wow, the fight in the night. Let's talk about it. The Chris Camozzi. Um, let's talk about Emiliano Sordi. That was a great fight. Um, I'm going to let you tell it. Tell him. Tell him yourself, Bubba. You know, Rob 87, best Canadian in the chat. Hey, you heard that first from Smokey McBongwater. Turn. Turn up your mic a little bit, just a tad bit, so the viewers can get to hear you a little better, Bubba. You know, uh, I gotta clean. You gotta turn up the mic. You know, I gotta go clean this day. So tell Rob87 how you feel about Roy McDonald. So tell him about how you feel about Roy McDonald. And there you have it. That was from Smokey McBongwater from Toronto, Canada. And now we're kicking off round number two. Glayson Tebow taking on Zeferino here. Zaffirino doing a great job 
And now Gleason T-Bow shoots in for the big takedown and get the fight to the ground. But Zeferino with the Renzo Gracie uh, background in jiu-jitsu does a great job of transitioning and getting the fight back to its feet. Wow. And um, Rory McDonald, like you said, he is the truth. You know, one of my favorite fighters, you know, a man who beat Tyron Woodley back in the day, who was the UFC champ. I feel like if Rory would have stayed around longer, Rory McDonald would have been a UFC champion. And you heard it. Rory's the man from Sheldon Moore. He says, Rob 87 says, salute to Smokey McBongwater. And now these lightweights tied up. They got this at welterweight. Gleason T Bell fought at 155. And so this is at 170. But, you know, you never know. The winner of this fight possibly could be matched up with Rory McDonald. You know, who wouldn't love to see Rory McDonald take on Zeferino? That would be a big fight. And now, here in round two, the man looking to pick up the pace here from round one. Gleason Tebow, you have to credit him with a lot of respect for getting that big takedown early in round one and landed a big left. He felt the power of Gleason Tebow. You know, uh, even though Gleason's up there in age 37, you know what they say. That's that grown man strength. You know, he bringing that, that man strength to the table here. You know, you can't count out a good fighter just because of his age. You know, we've seen plenty of times where the solid seasoned veteran went out and got it done just because they've been in the game a little bit longer, more experienced, seeing things that these young guys haven't seen. Um, and Gleason Tebow, Looking to turn it up here in round two. Wow. T-Bow got the takedown. So you have to give him that. You definitely do. I mean, Zeferino is not an easy guy to take down, especially when you work with guys like Renzo Gracie. You know, good takedown defense and uh, great submissions off the bat. Robert, yeah, no. Um, one minute and twenty seconds left here in round two. Very close round. You know, you hate to be a judge for this kind of round. You know, how do you score it? You know, Gleason got the big takedown. You know, um, but he didn't have enough you know, time on top to actually do some damage. So, you know, you might have to give it for Zeferino here, you know. But you just don't know how the judges are going to score these fights, man, especially in the PFL. We've seen a lot of, you know, decisions, you know, go to the wrong fighter, you know. In the PFL, a lot of draws are given. So you just don't know here. Yeah, he's trying, man. You know, Glayson's a veteran. He's a tough guy to catch. You know, his record speaks for itself, man. He's fought, uh, you know, he has tons of fights in the UFC. Glayson Tebow, he actually fought Khabib, you know. Yeah, Glayson Tebow, that dude's fought so many guys in the UFC. Let me go chip let me go look at Grayson T Bow's record, bro. Like SureDog.com, of course.
Racing T ball. He also did get caught for steroids. You remember that crap? He's probably on steroids right now. I mean, look at him. He's 37 years old and the guy's built like a tank. The dude looks like a freaking bodybuilder. And he's 37. He beat Will Brooks, Jason Tebow, and Efren Esquadero. Lost to Islam Makichev. He's fought Tony Ferguson. He's fought Abel Trujillo. I don't maybe he didn't fight. Um maybe he didn't fight Khabib. I got him mixed up with Islam Makichev. But he's fought Tony Ferguson, Jason Tebow. He's fought Norman Park, Pat Healy. I mean, the guy's been around the game a long time, bro. Got to give the second round to T-Bow. Um, what do y'all think? I might have to agree with you. It's a very close round. T-Bow did get the takedown. He landed some big shots as well on the feet. It's a close fight. I feel like it comes down, you know, to this third round. Who really wants it more? Who's going to dig deep? Who's going to pick up the win right here? Um, is anyone's fight? I got to agree with you, uh, Peter, here. And now they're back in the clinch here in round number three. But, I mean, like I said, the dude Glayson T-Bow's been in there with everybody, bro. Fought Tony Ferguson, fought Michael Johnson, fought Evan Dunham. I mean, Francisco, you know, he's fought Trinaldo. He did. See, I was right. He fought Khabib. He fought Khabib in Islam, Mikey Chuck. He fought Khabib back in 2012, bro, July 7th. Mario Yamasaki was the referee of that bout. I knew t Bow fought against uh, Khabib. I knew I wasn't tripping. That was a fight that Anderson Silva and Chell Sun in part two. Shout out to the one and only JC. You know, shout out to everybody in the chat. We appreciate the love and, um, you know, we couldn't be here without you guys. You guys are the reason why, you know, this channel is up and running. You guys are the reason why this stream goes on, you know. It's for you guys, man. You guys help this channel out. We would be nothing without you. So shout out to everyone in the chat, man. It's 24 Geezy, he was in there. And round three, man, very close. Nice leg kick from Zeferino. We knew this would be a tough fight, you know. Both of these guys are good on the ground. And, uh, you know, they respect each other's jiu-jitsu so much that they're not actually shooting in for takedowns and trying to get this fight down on the mat. This fight is really playing out on his feet to see who's really a better striker between these guys. And, you know, someone needs to step up here in this last... You know, minute and a half. Someone needs to step up here. Let's get dial in a little bit closer here. Oh, wow. These guys are slipping here. They might, you know. Zeferino did land a nice right on that slip. It looked like he was rocked, but it was more of a slip there. I mean, for them to be in the third round, they still look very fresh here, uh, I have to say. Um, you know, you can tell both fighters came in great condition. I mean, um, these guys are gassed out, not one bit. You know, they look like the same way they did from the first round. You know, great condition athletes here. Um, and a good jab from Zeferino. He's trying to, you know, make these points add up by landing that nice jab. Um, 
Glayson T. Bow looking to load up on a big shot here. Zeferino decides to go in for a takedown, but easily, you know, stuff from Glayson T. Bow. Now in the last 20 seconds of the round, they are working in the clinch here. Zeferino is touching T. Bow up. You know, that's the love of the game, you know, touch and not be touched. And he's doing a good job of working that jab, sticking and moving. Clayson T. Bow here trying to turn it up on the last few seconds. And this was a great fight in the welterweight division in the PFL. Wow, what a great fight. <laughs> Let's give it up for both men. You know, what a great performance. The veteran Glayson T. Bow taking on Zeferino, headed to the scorecard. What a great fight. You know, if you look at the total strikes, Zeferino outstruck Glayson T. Bow by five strikes there. Um, and we're going to see what the judges think. And we're going to get that, um, you know, that decision. Um, how many people in the chat, you know, got Glayson T. Bow and, and who got Ze uh, Ze uh, Zeferino picking up the decision? Who, who do you guys got? Good fight. At, yep, I got to agree with you. I feel like round one, Zeferino uh, took and, run, and round three he did. Glayson T. Bow. He got round two. But again, in this sport, you never know how the judges is going to score the fights. You know, um, PFL, they like to score draws. That's one thing that I've, I've really noticed from the judges in the PFL. They're a lot different than Bellator uh, judging and a lot different than the UFC judging system. I've seen a lot of draws. Uh, you know, been given out in the PFL. Um, and I've seen a lot of fights where fighters got robbed in the decision. So you just never know. Um, good fight. It was a great fight, man. So we're sitting here waiting patiently for the scorecard from the judges. That's not going to be too long, but, you know, you got to buy some time. You got to, you know, wait patiently and to hit, read these scorecards. Um, you know, I really like what the PFL has been doing for the sport of mixed martial arts. Uh, if T-Bow would have taken Zeferino down in the third, I'd have given the fight to him, but he didn't, you know. He didn't stick to the game plan, um, you know. It's a shame that Glayson only shot in, you know, for that one takedown in the second round. He has success. And so why abandon the takedowns? You know, the thing is, Glayson Tebow, that's what he's known for, having great takedowns. So he should have, you know, used his wrestling a little bit more, and he possibly would have got his hands raised, you know. Um, And Randy Couture, Kenny Florian, everyone has a score for Zeferino. So does Peter here. We all got Zeferino, you know. And shout outs to Rob87, you know. We got Canada in the house. We're waiting for Rory McDonald. You know, all the Americans waiting patiently for their favorite Canadian fighter after George St. Pierre, of course. We're waiting for Rory McDonald. The American fans love Rory McDonald just as much as the Canadians. And uh, we couldn't be more happier to see the debut of Rory McDonald. And Zeferino picks up the big decision here. Uh, that's how we all saw it here in the chat. That's how we all saw it, you know, on the PFL announcing uh, table, we that's how everyone had it scored. You know, Zeferino at the top. Um, and we'll be headed to the next fight very shortly, waiting very patiently for this big fight that's coming up here. And um, we'll be moving on to the co-main event.
you know, one fight away from the biggest fight on the PFL history, you know, having William McDonald, a former Bellator champion, a former, you know, UFC contender, Rory McDonald. And now we got Jason and Ray Cooper, the third, coming up very shortly. This is going to be a good one. I feel like Ray Cooper is going to pick up a highlight reel knockout here. I feel like Ray Cooper will get the first round finish and then we'll be shortly to that great, great main event. Curtis Miller taking on Roy McDonald. I love the Canadian fighters, tough as nails, all of them. Of course, you know, these Canadian fighters, you know, they're just as tough as as Americans, you know. They get produce some great fighters, and, uh, you know, those are our brothers, you know, our next-door neighbors, you know, the Canadians, you know. Um, and that's why they're built as tough and as strong as us. You know, they work just as hard. Uh, you know, they got the heart. Uh, they got, you know, no quit in them. And that's why us Canadians and Americans, you know, are at the top of everything. Um, when it comes to sports or when it comes to anything, we're the top, the top two countries, you know, and that's just that, Jack. You know, when I went down to Canada, I took a trip down to Toronto. You know, they accepted me with open arms. It felt like I was back in America. I felt no difference. It didn't feel like I left, you know, and the same thing. When our Canadian brothers come in, to the United States, we accept them with open arms, you know, uh, we're the same, you know, they're the great North, but Hey, you know, when they come home, you know, we treat them with, with respect, you know, and Ray Cooper, I feel like it's going to get the fastest knockout in the PFL here tonight. I feel like, you know, he doesn't deserve any, of Ray Cooper, man. This guy he's 20 and 12 on a three on a three fight win streak. But yeah, no. Glad to see the laughs in the chat, making the people laugh. You know, that's what we're here for. Having a good time. Everyone joking around, laughing. And uh that's what it's about, you know having a good time, enjoying the great fights, waiting patiently for the cold main event, waiting for Ray Cooper. I mean, I don't know this man, who they really match, match this guy up with, man, the Amazonian samurai. I mean, look at Ray Cooper. He's a huge favorite to win this fight. I mean, look at the betting odds. They're giving this guy zero chance in hell to picking up the win here. I don't know if the guy took the fight on short notice, what happened, but I feel like he doesn't deserve to be in here with Ray Cooper. You know, we know Ray Cooper has power in his hands. Um, you know, the fighter is unranked. Jason is out of France, you know. He is on a three five win streak. I give him that, you know. So let's see. You know, some you just can't count out you can't count out these guys, even though he's a big underdog. You know, he is on a three five win streak. You know, this is his debut in the PFL. I feel like he has a, a you know a very tough road ahead of him. You know, his first fight debuting in the PFL versus a guy like Ray Cooper. I feel like it's a dangerous fight for him. But you know that Anthony has good striking. He's training out of AKA Thailand. You know, we know that fighters out of Thailand, they develop a great Muay Thai uh, striking ability. So I f still feel like Ray Cooper, you know, if the striking's not there for him, he has more tools in his box than Jason here. He could, you know, rely on his wrestling, bring the fight back down to the ground. We know Ray Cooper has some underrated wrestling. He doesn't really showcase his wrestling too much because, 
of his knockout power in his strikes. So, um, you know, we know that he came up short against John Doomsday Howard in PFL 2019, you know, but then he went back on a two fight win streak. You know, he beat Chris Curtis, who was a very tough fighter. You know, he got that big knockout. He beat David Machad as well. I got to go with Ray Cooper. You know, we know that these Hawaiian fighters are very tough. They have a lot of heart, pack a lot of power in their hands, and is a great striker. So this is going to be a great fight. Salute to tap out the GOAT. Nah, man, shout outs to JC the GOAT, man. You know. Shout outs to the whole chat. chat shout out to everyone, man. Appreciate the love and respect. Romano, thank you, brother. Mr. You know, you know, everybody in the chat hitting saying you know, you know. Rob 87, you know, the best guys in the chat, you know, we got, got the best. We got the best guys in the world when it comes to the chat, man. When it comes to knowing about MMA and boxing, we got the best females. We got the best males. We know who knows everything about the sport, man. And that's why we're taking off here. Ray Cooper already in the cage, getting ready for the big fight. We got Anthony, you know. And now... Round one, Ray Cooper knockout. President Day, you know. You know, that's the only thing he got going for him that reach advantage in the height. For Jason Ponet. Um, but he trains out of AKA Thailand, Bubba. Calarissa Shields PFL. We're all waiting for her debut in the PFL. We know Clarissa Shields, she's going to be knocking these girls out, man. You know, you put those four ounce uh, MMA gloves on a boxer, you know. I wouldn't count out Pone. You heard that from the one and only Peter. He said he, you should not count this man out. You know, I feel like Ray Cooper is just going to walk through this guy. I feel like it's going to be a first round finish. Um, you know, even though, you know, Pone, you know, trained out of AKA Thailand, you know, I shouldn't sleep on the guy. But for some reason, I'm feeling like this one's going to end quick. You know, you might be right, Peter. You know, we've seen Ray Cooper stop before in the past. John Doomsday Howard, a uh, veteran of the UFC. We've seen him in the PFL in 2019, you know, get that big finish. Yo, it, did it lag on you, Bob? Maybe refresh. Maybe it's time to go on the phone. Maybe die. So you said the PS5 don't have the internet browser? All right. Wow. Pone looking to get Ray Cooper against the cage early here. Wow. I feel like Ray Cooper just has more tools, man. And there he goes. A big slam by Ray Cooper. Like I said, a very underrated wrestling background. Ray Cooper gets a big slam, lands in the side control. Looking to get the arm triangle choke here. In side control. Well, he's looking to slide in the side control out of half guard. And it's all over. Like I said, you know, I will be surprised 
in this fight didn't make it out the first round. Ray Cooper, like I said, had no business being a part of this fight with Anthony Pone. You know, he had no business of being in this cage with Ray Cooper. Um, you know, uh, Ray Cooper, what a fantastic performance here. Cooper is tough. That's it. You know, like I said, Ray Cooper rustling has been overrated. You know, I remember when he fought um, another fighter in the PFL uh, and he, you know, really showcased his wrestling. He didn't care about standing and banging, landing the big right. He really outclassed the fighter by just using strictly wrestling showcasing a great jiu-jitsu game as well, picking up, you know, a submission victory for Ray Cooper, you know, showing, you know, that he's just more than a striker, showing off that he's, you know, he's more than a, just a big right hand, you know, and Ray Cooper beat Jake Shields, uh, you know, Jake Shields, a guy you can pretty much call a Hall of Famer when it comes to mixed martial arts. He beat Jake Shields two times, you know, um, Jake Shields, in my opinion, is a, a mixed martial arts Hall of Famer, you know, fought in strike force, fought through the UFC. Ray Cooper is as tough as it gets. And um, we're going to be headed to the co-main, I mean, the main event. Cooper is from Hawaii. Yes, sir. He's from Hawaii. Uh, and we know how tough Hawaiian fighters are from the BJ Pins to the Max Holloways to the Ray Coopers. Uh to the Punos Sarianos. I mean, they have so many great fighters coming out of Hawaii. And, uh, you know, they're going to be a lot more coming out of Hawaii. And now we'll be headed to the moment we all been waiting for. You know, Warrior McDonald. Taking on Curtis Millinder. Both of these guys have a few things in common with each other. You know, they both fought at the UFC and they both fought in Bellator. So these guys have a few things in common with each other. And now they're meeting up in the PFL here. You know, Rory McDonald coming up short in his last fight against, you know, Douglas Lima, a man that he's actually beat before. Trained out of a great gym at a TriStar. Um, he's 21, 6, and 1. Curtis Millinder with a record of 18 and 6. We see that Roy McDonald is a huge favorite here tonight. And I feel like he has all the right reasons. You know, um, he's the younger fighter as well by two years. You know, Roy McDonald to have so much experience and to be this young of age is scary, you know. This guy still, you know, has the potential to return to the UFC and becoming the champion one day. You know, you never know. Uh, he's only 31 years old. He's still young. Uh, this is going to be a great main event. We're all excited for Rory McDonald uh, making his debut in the PFL. So is Curtis Millinder. Uh, Curtis Millinder is a guy you can't count out. You know, Curtis Millinder. You know, he's been around the fight game now a while. You know, he was that young, you know, unexperienced guy. But now he's experienced. Um, you know, like I said, he's fought in Bellator. He came up short against Sahab Hamasi. Uh, he picked up wins. You know, he fought against Bilal Muhammad in the UFC. Zaleski, Dos Santos. He beat Max Griffin, you know. He beat Tiago Alves. You know, he was on a nice win streak. He's fought in the LFA. So Cur Curtis Millinder is a guy you can't count out, you know. Um, and he's a he's a big welterweight, you know. He's he's six foot two, um, fighting at 170 pounds. So, you know, he has that nice 78 inch reach. So he's a big welterweight, maybe if um he you know he's able to you know, to use his footwork and use that distance and that reach advantage, maybe he could give Rory McDonald a tough time. You know, uh, Curtis Millinder is going to have that uh, 
two inch reach advantage and be the taller fighter. We seen Rory really have trouble with Wonder Boy Thompson, you know, a guy who was able to really use his distance well and try to catch Rory McDonald coming in. Curtis Millender could do the same here, you know, if he you know, use his distance very well, keep Rory McDonald on the outside, you know, use that reach advantage he has, and he possibly could give Rory a long night. Douglas Lima, you know, was the last man to beat Rory. Rory beat Neiman Gracie, um, beat Douglas Lima in Bellator. You know, he lost, uh, and he took a lot of damage against Gegard Musasi that fight. Uh, but that just shows how much heart Rory has. You know, he went up in weight class to fight a bigger man like Gegard Musasi. We've seen Rory beat Paul Daly. You know, he beat Safadine, Damian Maya, Tyron Willie. Came up short to uh, Robbie Lawler, beat Jake Ellenberger, beat legends like BJ Penn, beat Nate Diaz, you know. So that just shows, you know, how good Rory McDonald is, man. His record, his resume speaks for itself. And uh, this is going to be a great fight, man. This is going to be a good one. Let's see here in the chats what's going on. It has to be the pineapple there. I bet, man. They got some coconut, that coconut juice over there. That is something up in there, man. You slip me, homie. And now, this main event, the moment we all been waiting for here. And we'll be waiting here shortly and patiently for the Roy McDonald, Curtis Millinder, only in the professional fighters league. Wow. This is the biggest fight in the PFL history. The first time Roy McDonald is making his way down to the PFL. This is the biggest signing in MMA for the PFL. I mean, they have yet to get that household name fighter, and they finally did. You know, can you blame Maury McDonald from signing to the PFL, you know, chasing that big million-dollar payday to take care of his family and take care of what he needs to take care of as a Hall of Famer, I feel like, in MMA. I mean, this is a big, this is a big opportunity here for Roy McDonald. Um, you know, 
we know that he's already been a champion before in the in, in Bellator, but now he has an opportunity to be a champion in another organization. You know, to be a two-time champion, to be a champion in Bellator, to be a champion in PFL. He might be the first fighter in the history that captured titles in Bellator in the PFL. He might be the first champion to ever do that. I mean, you know, some people would say, hey, you know, he wasn't a UFC champion, so it don't matter. You know, he was a PFL champ. He was a Bellator champ, but he was never a UFC champ, so none of it matters. You know, I wouldn't agree with anyone who said that. You know, I feel like being a champion in Bellator is just as hard as becoming a champ in the UFC. Being a champion in the PFL is just as hard as being a champion in the UFC without a shadow of a doubt. Shout outs to the one and only Chris Court. Shout outs to the one and only Peter. Um, where is McDonald from? Roy McDonald? Are you serious? You don't know who Roy McDonald is. Uh, McDonald is from, you know, the UFC, brother. He's fighting out of Canada. He trains out of TriStar Gym. Um, you know, um, he's a great fighter. He beat Tyron Woodley, you know. He's beat a lot of great fighters. He beat legends like BJ Penn. Roy McDonald is a monster. Yes, sir. Roy McDonald is my Canadian brother. Exactly. We love Roy McDonald in America just as much as they love him in Canada. You know, um, I'm surprised that people don't remember who Roy McDonald is. He was the closest guy, you know, that you could have compared to George St. Pierre when Roy was in his prime. You know, he beat Woolley. He beat BJ Penn. He's beat former champions. And former, uh, you know, guys who are going to go off and be inducted in the Hall of Fame. Um, Roy McDonald beat Nate Diaz. Um, you know, his resume speaks for itself. He's fought Robbie Lawler for the title before. You know, he came up short. But Roy McDonald's that guy. Yes, he did. Him and, him and um, Robbie Lawler had some of the most vicious fights I've ever seen. Yes, he beat Nate Diaz. Roy McDonald threw away, threw Nate Diaz around like he was a baby. You yeah, know, he picked him up and slammed him around for a few rounds. Um, so Roy McDonald, I feel like, is one of the best welterweights, you know, you can have representing the PFL right now. Uh, you know, the PFL was in need of a lot of great fighters, and they did that on the offseasons. They brought former champions you know, to their roster. They brought the Anthony Showtime Pettises. They brought Fabricio Wardoon. They brought Rory McDonald. You know, all of those guys were champions. You know, Rory was never a champion in the UFC, but he captured gold in the Bellator. You know, he, Fabricio was a heavyweight champion in the UFC. Um, Anthony Pettis, former WEC champ, former UFC lightweight champ. So um, it's a great fight, and uh, I love Canada, nice people. Yes, sir. We love the Canadians, uh, and, you know, they're just like our next-door neighbors, you know. It's not too much difference between us Americans and, and, uh, and us Canadians, you know. Uh, like I said, when they come down to America, we accept them. We take them with open arms, just like when we go down to visit – you know, great city, like, you know, going down to Toronto, uh, you know, great Providence, you know, going over there and, um, you know, they accept us with open arms, you know. Uh, so that's how it should be, you know. Americans and Canadian, you know, we've been having a great relationship with each other and it's not going to end, you know. And that's how it's going to stay. And now Roy McDonald. And Curtis Millinder here in the cage. Um, 
the arm reach. Wow, they got Roy with a 79. I thought on Tabology they had it at 76. I feel like, you know, it's an easy win for Roy McDonald here. I feel like, you know, if Roy McDonald gets this fight to the ground, Curtis Millender is not going to have any answers off of his back. Uh, I feel like Roy McDonald wrestling his jiu-jitsu, you know, will be a little bit too much for Curtis Millender here. Uh, if Roy wants this fight on the ground, he'll be able to control Curtis Millender at will. Um, Roy McDonald is a phenomenal striker as well. He mixes up, you know, his head kicks very well with a lot of um, high strikes from, you know, his boxing background. Roy McDonald is a well-rounded fighter. He has seven knockout finishes. He has seven submission victories. So, you know, his he's more versatile. You know, he, he can knock you out on the feet, and if things aren't working for him on the feet, he could easily take you down underground, grind you out to a decision, or submit you. You know, uh, he has a lot of tools in his arsenal. Um, and now Keith Peterson, the official referee, bringing us in here for the PFL main event. Wow. I'm excited. What a great fight here. Yes, sir. All day, Chris Kurt. All day, Court. All day, brother. Yeah, that's what I said, dude. I just I looked at his reach before the fight on Topology. They had it uh, at 76, and now it says 79. I don't know. So far, just a filling out process between both men, trying to get comfortable here with each other. Curtis Millender throwing a lot of kicks here. Um, I'd like to see Rory you know, get this fight down on the ground. I feel like, and he he does it. He shoots him for the big takedown. Curtis Millender doing a good job so far stuffing the takedown. But I feel like eventually Roy McDonald will get him down. He's being relentless with the takedown here. You know, he has that single leg. I would like to see him, you know, Maybe try a trip here. But Curtis Millinder showcasing some good takedown defense. I'm surprised that Millinder was able to stuff the takedown. But still, a good position for Rory McDonald, you know, having Curtis up against the cage, you know, and he gets the big takedown. Wow. And now Curtis Millender is going to be in a lot of trouble here. Rory McDonald is a guy you don't want on top of you. And then Rory takes the back already, looking for the rear naked choke maybe. I mean, he gets the triangle. Wow. This could be oh, this is gonna be it pretty soon. I feel like you don't want a guy like Rory McDonald on top of you, and even if he doesn't get the submission here in round one, you know, at least you know he's in dominant position here. You know, having that body trap, you know, and squeezing a lot of energy out of Curtis Miller just with the body trap alone you know and uh this is a bad position for curtis millender uh yes he has his back 
Rory McDonald looking to get the rear naked choke here in PFL. He's doing a good job of beating, beating on Miller. I think he has it. I think that's it. That should be it. Yeah, that's it. You know, and it's all over. Rory McDonald here in the PFL getting the big W. Rory McDonald on his debut in the professional fires league picking up the W. Wow, what an amazing performance from Rory McDonald looking to capture gold in the PFL after becoming a Bellator champion. Wow, what an amazing performance from Rory McDonald. And it is just like that, Jack. Yes, sir, Sheldon Moore, brown belt. And Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. There it is. It's all over. Chris, yes, sir. Nice. He got it done. Like I said, you know, once Rory McDonald gets this fight to the ground, Curtis Miller will have no chance in hell, you know, of escaping. You know, we knew Curtis Miller always had trouble, you know, with his takedown defense and his submission defense. And Rory McDonald exposed that here tonight in the PFL. You know, getting a first-round finish, you know, earning three points in the PFL tournament. Oh, man, I can't wait to see what they have next for Rory McDonald. Could you only imagine Ray Cooper versus Rory McDonald? That would be a crazy fight. Rory is the man. We know it. We all going to celebrate – the big win for Rory McDonald. What a great job. You know, what a great job from Rory McDonald, man. I know all the people back home, they're celebrating here. They're having a great time celebrating the victory of Rory McDonald on his debut in the Professional Fighters League. Everybody's been waiting for this moment. Everybody's been asking me, how do you think Rory's going to do in the PFL? You know, after losing to Douglas Lima, after losing to Gagar Musasi, is he the same fighter? Uh, you know, is Rory going to be able, you know, to compete at that high level like he once did in the past? I, and, you know, I kept telling him, yes, of course, Rory McDonald will win, you know, this welterweight tournament. He will become a two-time champ. He already won the belt in Bellator. Now he's going to capture the, the million dollar payday and capture goal in the PFL. He's only 31 years old. He has, you know, a tons of experience. He's fought the greatest fighters that you could even think of. And Roy McDonald is the man. I got tequila, no beer, though. We ain't drinking the beer. We're going to take the shots of the tequila. You heard it first from Chris. You know, we celebrating, baby. No beer, too much estrogen. In the beer. That's what my boy Smokey McVaughn Water said. Beers for women, liquors for men, and let's go. Roy McDonald, let's go, baby. Big win for Roy McDonald. Getting the post final interview here very shortly. He earned six points in the PFL welterweight division. Winner by first round submission. So he picked up six points. My fault. I said three earlier. He picked up the six. And there we go. You know, what an amazing performance. It gets no better than that. Um, you know, I really, I'm really happy, you know, for Rory, you know, a lot of people, you know, were messaging me saying that Rory wasn't the same fighter, you know, in my inboxes, people saying no way Rory gets it done. You know, he's not the same guy. He wanted to retire not too long ago. Uh, and I said, this is the new Rory McDonald, you know, um, he's focused again. Um, and a focused Rory McDonald is very scary. Um, Rory won, Harold. Yes, sir. 
We all celebrating in here. We taking shots at tequila. Everybody's smoking up. Everybody's packing bowls. You know, we're we taking this one, baby. Um, we celebrating here from America to Canada. You know, everybody's pulling up. Everybody's smoking up. You know, we celebrating this one, baby. Yes, sir. Roy McDonald. I mean, you got to give Roy McDonald, of course, the submission of the night. You know, getting the big submission victory in round one, give him a bonus. He deserves it. Um, fight of the night, you got to give it to uh, Emiliano Sordi taking on uh, Chris Camozzi. That was fight of the night, in my opinion. Um, you know, knockout of the night, got to go to Cesar Ferreira. Um, getting that first round finish, um, you know, in the PFL delivered. I feel like it was a better showcasing than last week. Um, there was a lot of upsets in week one of the PFL last week. You know, Bubba Jenkins um, coming over from the Bellator, picking up a big win against Lance Palmer, a man, you know, who's won the tournament two separate times. Um, you know, Anthony Pettis coming up short against Clay Collard. It was a lot of, um, you know, a lot of underdogs coming up with the big wins last week. But I feel like, you know, the favorites dominated, you know, this Thursday. And, um, you know, Ray Cooper and Roy McDonald both leading welterweight standings with the six points. Um, you know, these fighters are fighting for points now, you know, um, so they could advance to the playoffs. You know, uh, Ray Cooper picked up a big submission victory as well, but I think Rory McDonald's submission was a lot more technical. I feel like Rory McDonald's, you know, submission was a lot better. You know, he, uh, Ray Cooper got an arm triangle and, uh, you know, he got it in a position of being in half guard, you know, usually you got to be, you know, in a better position to get that arm trying from side control, even in mount, you know. Roy always been a beast. Yes, sir. It's Sean, you know, O'Connell. Post fight interview here with Roy McDonald. Let's see what he has to say. Is he gonna call out any names? And don't forget, we have UFC coming up this Saturday. We got Dominic Reyes in a light heavyweight division, you know, and uh, on the main event. So on Saturday, we also have some big fights. Yeah, he was winning against Robbie Lawler. He just, you know, he had a bad injury, you know, that nose of his, you know, gave him a lot of uh, a lot of trouble, you know. Uh, if it wasn't for his nose going out on him, he, he was going to walk away with that decision, you know. Um, the weekend is loaded. Yes, sir. And Roy McDonald. I feel like he's gonna have a lot of he's gonna have some big plans in the works for him here in the PFL. You know, the man was pretty much just warming up here. Um, you know, getting comfortable with being in the PFL for the first time, and he uh he did well. You know, a lot of people was asking me, do you think uh you know he's gonna be able to compete, you know. At that high level, you know, making his debut, uh, is he going to have those jitters? You know, is he going to have, you know, is his nerves going to get the best of him fighting in the PFL for the first time? And, uh, you know, I felt like he handled those questions very well. You know, he went out there, he dominated. He wasn't nervous at all. He looked comfortable. Um, and now, you know, the heavyweights and – um you know, the women's lightweight will be next week. Um, you know, on Thursday, May 6th, we got 
the return of Fabricio Werdum. Um, another great pickup from the PFL, a former UFC heavyweight champ. Um, so, you know, you guys know where to tune in. Um, if you guys want to, you know, catch Fabricio Werdum, you know, you're going to have to uh, tune in on Thursday, next Thursday, to watch Fabricio Werdum. Um but just a great card from the PFL. They delivered, you know. I bet Rory would be Mazidov. Of course, Mazidov, he's a good fighter, but he's not he's not as good as Rory McDonald, you know. Uh Mazidov is tough, you know. But when it comes to skills, Rory is just a lot better everywhere. I feel like his striking is just as good. And um Mozzie Dolls always had trouble with great grabblers such as Damian Maya. Uh, and, um, you know, he's always had trouble with good wrestlers. I feel like Rory could take him down easily. And uh, I'll point him on the feet as well. I can't wait. Kayla Harrison will be fighting next week. Um, this uh, next Thursday, Kayla Harrison returns to the PFL. One of the biggest names, uh, one of the biggest female names in MMA right now. Um, she's a foreign fighter to watch. Uh, you know, has a great wrestling background, great submission background as well. She's been working on her striking. And Kayla Harrison, you know, is really the future of women's MMA. Um, I can't wait to get a chance to watch her fight next week, you know. Thug Rose Nama Yunus, yeah, man, that big head kick, you know, everybody was countering her out that fight, but she delivered, you know, especially getting that first round finished the way she did. I mean, that was a big head kick. Yeah, I like Rose when she has her hair, you know, when she grows her hair back down. She is, she's good looking for sure. I don't even know how they gave Mazidoff that freaking rematch against Usman. Hey man, he got knocked out in the very first round. That was crazy. Oh, Kayla Harrison is cute. I, oh, not Rose. Well, yeah, you know, both of them are kind of good looking, you know. Wow. So, Randy Couture, Kenny Florian. That was a great night, though, a fight for the PFL. Yeah, Kayla Harrison, she is, you know. <clears throat> She's a strong gal for sure. She'll probably kick my ass. So, um... I want to show you guys, you know, the upcoming card and, uh, you know, what we got in the works here. So we're doomed. So you got LFA 106 coming up as well. UFC Vegas 25. That's the fight card. You know, that's coming up this Saturday. Dominic Reyes, you know, taking on a dangerous man who just be Vulcan Ozdemir. Uh, that's going to be a tough fight. You got Cub Swanson. Returning on the co-main event. 
You got Iron Q to Lava, Dustin Jacoby, Sean Strickland, Christoph Jocko, Marab, Cody Stammen, Ronda Marcos. You know, somewhat a decent card. You know, not a lot of big names that a lot of people will know, but you know, somewhat of a decent card. Dominic Reyes. I feel like he's going to have a tough night against him, man. His opponent is going to hit heavy. Let's see. I like the PFL is different than the UFC. Yeah. I like them all, man. You know, um, but their format is a little bit different. You know, they fight for points, tournament kind of format. So, uh, yeah, I like the PFL. <clears throat> I just wish, you know, the PFL wouldn't have seasons, you know, like how the UFC, they put cards like maybe every month, every two weeks, they'll have a fight card. I feel like the PFL would be better that way, you know, um, just putting on cards, you know, every few, every few weeks, every few months. Because after a while, PFL, they'll uh, disappear, you know, on the offseason, make some free agent picks. But this is the fight that's coming up in the PFL 3. This will be next week. You got Werdum versus Fajera. You know, never really seen this Fajera guy, man. He's 6 and 2. You know, um, Wow, is this crazy? This guy's six foot ten. What the hell? Yo, it's Toronto. This dude that's fighting Fabricio were doing six foot ten, dude. Trains with Team Noguera. That dude's a monster. Six foot ten. What the f he's fighting the LFA. So he's fighting a solid promotion, you know. He he's one and one in, in the LFA. Lost to legal punches to the back of the head. Picked up a triangle choke. Oh wow, man! Fabricio or Doom could be in trouble. Six foot ten. That's crazy, man. Cub Swanson. Is PFL now? Nah, nah, he's in the UFC. Cub Swanson is fighting on the UFC uh, this Saturday on the co main event. Yeah, that's what I said, man. God damn, the guy's six foot ten. Yeah, I, I agree with you, man. It's better that way. Uh, I don't like the off season kind of format. That's like Demarcus Cousins size in MMA. Yeah, that dude's crazy big. I don't that must be six foot ten, two forty-eight. So for Risha or Doom, man, he's gonna have a tough fight for him, man. Only if Verdum is gonna be able to get the fight down on the ground and try to take him down and lay on him. Kayla Harrison taking on Marias. You know, sixteen and ten. Maybe the most experienced girl Kayla Harrison fought. You know, she don't have the best record, but she has a lot of experience. 26 fights, you know, um, and she's on a big three-fight win streak as well. So this might be the most experienced female Kayla Harrison is going to fight. So Kayla Harrison maybe have her hands cut out for her. You know, it's not about having the great record. Sometimes these fighters with a lot of experience just get it done. You know, uh, Kayla Harrison only has eight fights. This girl has 26 of them. You got Muhammad Usman. So you got Kamaru Usman's brother fighting in the PFL. Wow. Who would have known? Muhammad Usman, 7-1. Kamaru Usman's brother. You know, making his debut in the PFL. 
Usman's brother been on a, a you know nice little tear, four or five win streak. Um, fought in tight in FC. Um, you know, representing the country Nigeria. So Usman's brother will be fighting in the PFL. Um, taking on Brandon Salas. You know, five and one. Big boy, six foot five, you know, 262. This is going to be some heavyweight. Uh, he's also on a nice three fight win streak. So we got we got some big fights coming up next week, man. Um, you know, like I said, Usman's brother, you know, who's not going to be excited to watch Usman's brother fight, you know? Lurch wasn't even six foot ten. That's interesting. Usman's little bro, his little big brother, I think, man. That man, you yeah, know, I think he's a heavyweight, man. His little big brother. He's 32. How old is Usman? And who else they got? Coming up, okay, Justin Willis. I remember Justin Willis. He fought in the UFC, Big Pretty. They called him Big Pretty Justin Willis. Trained with Daniel Cormier out of uh, American Kickboxing Academy. Um, Big Pretty, a.k.a. Big Titty Justin Willis. Wow. I remember when he fought against Curtis Blades. That was the last time we seen him. Fight against Curtis Blades on UFC on ESPN 6. And he got dominated. Now he's in the PFL taking on Dennis Goldsoff out of Russia. Goldsoff is a pretty tough fighter. Um, 25 and 6. I feel like uh, Dennis will pick up the big win here. 6 for 5. Justin Willis will be in trouble. But, you know, Justin Willis does come out of a good camp. You can't count him out. That's going to be a big fight. So we got a lot of fights in the works, man. Let's take a, a closer look to who else they got on the card. Any names that stand out. You know, um, and that's about it, you know. Those are the most noticeable guys, you know, people that I've known and seen fight. So uh, next week, PFL, pretty decent card. You know, you got Kayla Harrison, you got Fabrizio. We're doing what more do you need? Um, and a great performance from Rory McDonald. And, uh, you got Bellator 258 in the works as well coming up on the 7th. Juan Archuleta taking on uh, Sergio Pettis, the little brother of Anthony Pettis. You got Anthony Johnson and Joel Romero. That's a crazy fight right there, man. That's a big fight in the light heavyweight division. Uh, Patricky Pitbull coming on, you know. The Pitbull's brother. You got Michael Venom Page, Jerick Anderson. Great fight. Um, Josh Hill. So uh, Bellator looking like to uh, to deliver with a solid card, man. Henry Corrales, Eric Perez, Logan Strolley, great wrestler who has uh, a lot of potential to become something big in Bellator. He's 11 and 1. Logan Strawley, you know, has a lot of potential to become, you know, the next Mac Hughes. Um, Logan Strawley, 11 and 1. You know, I feel like he got robbed his last fight, a lot of people thought. Um, so I feel like Bellator is actually um, putting together the better card out of, uh, out of the bunch here. Uh, you know, 
So we got a lot of great fights, man. Bellator looking like to be leading right now, man, with the Anthony Johnson, Yoel fight, Juan Archuleta, Sergio Pettis, Michael Venom Page, Derek Anderson. They got a lot of fights, man. And um, I just can't wait, you know. Let's see here in the comment section what's going on. Oh, he's light. Oh, he's heavyweight. Let's see here. Bomb squad. Kayla wins. Sheldon Moore. I agree with you on that, brother. Kayla all the way. Too much power. Usman's brother on the card. Usman's 33, so yeah. That's his little brother by one eight, one uh one year or so. Um his little big brother, you know. Um water power for show. Break squad, not bomb squad, Chris. Court, what the fuck? Hating on my king, blah blah blah. Let's see here. Anthony Johnson versus Romero is a good fight. Yeah, hell yeah, that's a great fight, man. That's a great fight. You need some help. And, uh, you know, PFL delivered, man. That was a great night of fights, man. You know. Juan Archuleta, man. And Sergio Pettis. Let's, let's take a look at what else is going to be going on in the future here. What kind of fights they got booked. Hopefully every fight, you know, stays together. No one pulls out. No injury happens. So we were at Bellator on the 7th. Then UFC 26, Michelle Watterson, Marina Rodriguez. Nah, that's a main event. Come on now, guys. They oh this this card was supposed to be Dillashaw versus Corey Sanhagen, but TJ Dillashaw pulled out of the fight. Some something happened to him. At Amanda Rebus versus Angela Hill, Big Ben Rothwell on the co-main event. Philip Lynch, Neil Magny, Jeff Neal. That's a good fight. See Jeff Neal dominated Neil Magny though. Um, I don't know actually. That's a tough one, Neil Magny. That's a big fight right there. That's a that fight actually should have been the co-main event, you know, instead of Ben Rothwell. I mean, they should have been up before Amanda Rebus, Angela Hills, well, Diego Ferreira, Gregor Gillespie, uh, Kyle Dawkins, Phil Haas. It's a pretty decent card. Not bad. Maurice Green. Ah, not bad of a card, but not great. You know, uh, they got some all right fights on here. I don't agree with the uh, Michelle Watterson on the main event. I feel like Neil Magny, Jeff Neal should have been on the main event before those girls. But, yeah, you know, uh, that's how it goes sometimes. And um, Nate Diaz five versus Leon Edwards. Yes, sir. That's coming up. Six foot two, and he can box. Nate Diaz has a tough fight coming up. Yeah, Leon Edwards, I think, actually wins that fight, man. Um. Leon Edwards is a tough fight for everybody, for anybody, man. Um, I don't like the whole eye poke thing, you know, with Bilal Muhammad. But, um, you know, it happens as part of the fight game. We've seen a fight in the PFL today in from an eye poke. 
Um, but I feel like Leon has been more active. We haven't seen Nate fight um, since the Mazidal fight where he really didn't look that good. The thing is about Nate Diaz, he has great conditioning. Um, he could take a lot of damage and still move forward, you know, and, you know, most of the time, you know, his opponents, the opponents that he fight against, you know, they give him everything they got and Nate is still standing. And, uh, you know, that's when he turns it up, you know, late in the fight, waiting until the fighter throws everything they got at him. That's going to be a crazy fight, but I, I like Leon Edwards. I think that fight, man, I really like Nate Diaz. You know, I'm a big uh, fan of Nate. But, you know, I think Leon's just going to be a little bit better, man. You, you never know. You know, Nate has that great jiu-jitsu. Could pick up a submission. And now we take a look at one championship. You know, they got Brandon Vera, the truth, you know, putting his title on the line. Against a tough Canadian fighter, uh, you know, he actually fought in the UFC before. Uh, Arjun Bueller, 10-1. and one. Um, I feel like this guy has enough tools to give Brandon Vera a run for his money. Arjun Bueller, a pretty solid wrestler. Uh, you know, he's fighting out of Canada, you know. Um, and I got a chance to get a good look at him. When he fought in the UFC against Juan Adams, where he picked up a, a decision, you know, he, he also Marcelo Gom in the UFC. Um, you know, I'm surprised that he's not in the UFC anymore. You know, he he only tasted one loss in the UFC and, uh, you know, he picked up he picked up. a He went three and one in the UFC. I don't know how. He slipped away from the UFC, but now he's in uh, one championship. And uh, I feel like he has the right tools to give Brandon Vera a run for his money. Arjun Bueller, you know, has a good background in wrestling. You know, uh, Brandon Vera also fought in the UFC in the past. Um, Gray Striker at one point had a lot of potential, um, you know. And uh, he's gonna, he's coming off of a loss. So, you know, Arjun Bueller, you know, Brandon Ferris, 43 years old, you know, he's up there in age, doesn't really mean anything. But I feel like Arjun Bueller could be the toughest test so far for Brandon Vera, you know, it's a great fight. One uh, FC done a great job of matching those boys up together. Um, Sean Moore did a couple interviews and he's a sharp cookie. Yo, I thought Jeff Neal was the truth. Me too. Until Stephen wonder boy Thompson danced around him, uh, you know, for five rounds, you know, he looked like the truth. Come on, tap out. You hating on the Korean, the karate hottie. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, man. I, I mean, I don't think she deserved. I ain't hating on her, but I don't think she deserved to be main event material. I feel like Jeff Neal and Neil Magny is the best fight on that card, without a doubt. The karate, the karate Heidi, she's fine, man. You know, but they gonna they gonna put her on a on a main event. You know. They still fighting? Nah, it's over now. How long has been over? Probably like 10, 15 minutes. End it. The fuck? All right, y'all. We out of here. Peace.